Austin, how do you think Roche would trash talk me was to come up against him in a fight? <laughs> Cowards die first. <laughs> yeah. Like by the time that you're done with Roche, it, you, you've almost got like this weird, almost like big brother, little sister vibe yeah. going on between the two of them. Yeah, totally. Like it's it like it's just like oh. This is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> it was such a pleasant surprise. That, that's what Roche does. Like he just puts a smile on people's faces. Cool. Yeah, and then maybe like the climax is you get like a double limit break or something. They could do so much. Oh, that would be radical. <laughs> I can kind of do it sometimes. I, I did it the other day. Wow, that's awesome. There we go. <laughs> are you guys hearing? <laughs> Crew of seven are probably going to retire after a seven remake. Nomura yeah. is going to keep going. He's like, uh, you know, Wolf of Wall Street. I ain't leaving. You know, he's he's not going Nomura anywhere. Nomura is like, I will go down with this ship. Because <laughs> <laughs> when he roars, he goes. <laughs> he does that, and it's just this grotesque vomiting noise. And I I went too deep with it and actually almost made myself throw up. Oh, um, right. Ooh, Phil, your hair is fantastic today. Goodness gracious. <laughs> thank you. You can thank my girlfriend. She's uh, giving me some tips. She's gonna, and you'll get to meet her in a second. She's going to be chilling She did a, a bit fantastic too. job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Philip. I'm a filmmaker. You may know me from such misadventures as living as a warrior monk in China and getting beat up by Shaolin monks. Uh, you can find that full documentary on YouTube, which just hit 1.5 million views. We're celebrating, which is super cool. So thank you guys for that. But I also talk about Final Fantasy. And today we have a good friend of mine, Austin Lee Matthews, on the show. The voice of Roche from FF7, awesome creator, writer, musician, the list goes on uh, amongst the things besides his acting. So Austin, please introduce yourself and uh, tell us about what you do. Um, well, you did a pretty decent job of doing so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, hey, what's up? Um, I'm Austin Lee Matthews. I am, as he said, the voice of Roche. And Sid in the Final Fantasy series. I'm Sid in Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon. Um, I'm uh, Ash mm -hmm. uh, Carbide in um, Cold Steel. Cold Steel, yes. Mm -hmm. Wow, my brain isn't working. I just wrapped up the stream. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> it's okay. I know exactly uh, what you're talking Xander about. Xander Shockadera and Beyblade. Uh, yes. One of the voices of God in God Eater 3. Uh, I'm Arthur in Mystery Skulls Animated. Um, and I'm the creator of Megaton Girl. I do art. I direct. I do whatever the want. And I get uh, whatever the heck I want. And I get paid for it. So heck yeah, <laughs> heck yeah. That's what I want to talk about. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about Megaton Girl uh, quite a bit tonight, and we're gonna talk about some of the work Austin has done outside of Roche. But of course, we're gonna be covering everything from crazy Final Fantasy VII theories, my my famous insane Sephiroth ideas that I have that you guys seem to enjoy. When you talk about acting, uh, voice acting, etc., because Austin has actually helped me recently with my voice acting reel, and it's been yes. such a pleasure to work with them. And uh, I, I really learned a lot from Austin. So you know, another big shout out to him and his generosity. And we're going to talk to you guys uh, about Roche, about acting, about a lot of stuff. It's going to be fun, and we're just going to be uh, you know chilling. Also, as always, Austin, feel free to open up the chat at your leisure. And if I've you got see it anything, right here, I'm going to need to occasionally do this. Perfect. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, as they say in New York City, you know, if you see something, say something. If you want to talk about anything in chat, if something catches your interest, just hop on it. Super informal. As always, you know, we're we're buddies, so it's all good. Um, oh, but yeah. to start, I just want to say that, of course, so on top of playing Roche, you are uh, the creator of Megaton Girl. And uh, I actually told my girlfriend about it as well. And uh, we really enjoyed listening to a little bit of it. And we actually wanted to, if you want to come over, Aaliyah, you can say hi to Aaliyah for a second. We wanted to show you something cool. Oh. Hello. Hey. Hello. I'll move over so you can fit the mics in your face. But yeah, so Aaliyah's here too. And uh, we really enjoyed your work. And do you want to say anything or should we? Um, first of all, love what you're doing. Such an inspiring story. I've never seen anything like it genuinely. Um, Thank you. Keep it up. I'm a big fan already. Like I saw the characters on your Twitter. I'm like, oh, it's over. I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, uh, we actually wanted to give you a little surprise today, Austin. Okay. And Aaliyah is an artist. And she oh, snap. actually decided that she was going to draw a little something for you. So I'm showing it on stream now. And I'll send it to you, Austin, in the uh, DM. Oh, snap. Let me see. Ah! It's my girl! <laughs> yeah! Yes. 
Yeah, I saw her and I immediately told Philip, I'm like, you know I'm drawing her right. You just know I am. <laughs> Yeah. she's one of my favorite designs I've ever come up with it it's always makes me happy when people draw Laurel because it's just like yay yes. like I, I had so much she, her design has probably changed the most in the eight years that I've been working on this show uh -huh. um, I actually her design became solidified like really early last year okay yeah wow. um, but, awesome uh, yeah really really I, cool I, look really unique look too yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna save that into my my Megaton girl folder. Aaliyah chose violence. Okay. She unplugged the mic. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm not the only one that trained at Shaolin. Well, I can hear life. you just fine. <laughs> She's been training at Shaolin as well. Also, yeah. Austin, I drew you a little something too. I want to show you. Oh here. snaps! Oh snaps! There she is. <laughs> <laughs> the valiant. I love. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you appreciate that. So yeah. That rules. Awesome. So, anyways, yeah, we wanted to just present it, and again, thank you for. Uh, Thanks for the help on the reel. Thanks for everything. Just being an awesome creator. So, guys, hey, I was out. happy to do so. Your your reel was really solid, and like, I was like, oh, we don't have to do a lot to make this sound good, because <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like, it is in my opinion the best like first time demo reel that I've ever heard out of anybody. Wow. Um, thank you. So That's huge. like, I when you sent that, I'm just I'm just like, like at first like. So, like, even with, like, professionals, I'm always just like, okay, they're making their own demo reel. Let's hear it. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there, I've gotten some that have been just, like, <sighs> <laughs> wow, <that's laughs> even from people who I know who have made demos before. And I'm just like, why are you doing this? Um, but yours, I was just like. <laughs> Thank you, man. I don't have to do much to this. <laughs> yeah, I really appreciate that, seriously. And you, you guys can hear that over on uh, my YouTube channel or Twitter if you want to check it out. But yeah, yeah thanks again, can. man. Again, you know, check out Megaton Girl, guys. It is uh, it's a lot of fun. It's super unique, and uh, I think you know within a couple of years, it's probably going to be like a full animation or something at this rate. So. We'll see. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that takes a lot, but we actually uh, we've got a little bit more to record for episode five. Um, but, uh, we're going to be releasing that hopefully here. I want to say probably release episode five at the start of September. Oh, wow. Maybe. That's amazing. Um, but yeah, so I'm, that's the episode I've probably been the most excited for. Um, I was so excited for it that before I even aired episode one, we did a D and D session inspired by that episode. That's awesome. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. we love D and D as I well. Love, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, we enjoy D and D. But, anyways, yeah, that's just one of our surprises of tonight. So I hope you enjoy it, man. And uh, I had really enjoy it. I was, I was like. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. oh, guys, you should check out the rest of Aaliyah's work. She streams, but also oh. she draws uh, like all the time. Do I follow on. you on Twitter, Aaliyah? Uh, I think I do. <laughs> yeah, she'll be back in a second. We're giving away a copy of Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster later on the stream. So don't forget, guys, be around for it. All you got to do is be following to enter that giveaway. So yeah, she'll be back. But all right. moving oh, on. So I hope you enjoy the artwork, man. Moving I on. I really enjoy it. Awesome. Very, very happy. So let's talk about integrate final fantasy last time you were on the show we talked a lot about uh you know of course ff7 remake we have now yes. intermission and integrate um and for me personally i talked about this before one of my favorite parts was i was running around in intermission and i suddenly heard this laughter coming from like <laughs> <laughs> coming from the 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 far off way and i'm just like no way and i got this huge smile on my voice and of course it was Austin. And for some reason, <laughs> it never even crossed my mind for a second that Roche would be in this because I was like, oh, it's Yuffie. You know, she's gonna be running around. And it's Roche. I never expected it. So simultaneously, it was like, oh, he's gonna be in like confirm be in future parts, like a million percent. But also it's just such a joy to have you back. Um, yeah. How was the comeback? And and give it a second go. Uh, it was so much fun. Like uh, we recorded that at some point after our our, our last interview. Mm -hmm. um, but when they called me in, I was just like, "Ooh, what, what are we doing?" And then when I found out that it was DLC, I was just like, "Okay, what are we doing here?" Yeah. Um, and then when I found <laughs> out that you know what what they were doing with uh, with Yuffie, I got so excited. And like as the session went on, I got more and more excited because Roche has like this like. 
like by the time that you're done with Roche, it, you, you've almost got like this weird, almost like big brother, little sister vibe yeah. going on between the two of them. Yeah, totally. Like it's it like it's just like oh, this is exactly what I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> it was so much fun, um, and I always. I, I love watching people's reaction to seeing Roche in Integrate for the first time because I was watching um, I was watching um, what's his name Maximilian um, oh yep yeah. and like he, it, like he, he's just like playing his guy's controller he's just like this and all of a sudden he he hears ha, 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 and he goes <laughs> exactly exactly and, and like he like he like looks around and he goes oh huh, what are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like everybody, all of us had that same reaction. And yeah, it's just like, like, what are you doing here? What? He's in the, I don't know why. Like, it's just not in, in, it was the last thing in my mind. I was like, oh, he'll probably, you know, he'll probably be in part two out in the world. But <laughs> it was such a pleasant surprise. Yeah, we were all, we we're all so glad because, you know, that, that's what Roche does. Like, he just puts a smile on people's faces. He's so fun. He's so awesome. Uh, Woohoo he says, yeah, it was good wants. seeing Roche. My dopamine <laughs> skyrocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go but no it, it, was, it was an absolute blast so yeah i mean uh a year after ff7 is really over a year after now um has your perspective changed on the project and has it sunk in yet that you're part of one of the biggest franchises like ever in existence oh it's sunk in like the minute i booked it my um <laughs> yeah like i i still have like times where i'm just like god damn i'm in this yeah like because <laughs> like um FF7 was an interesting part of my life because I never played the game until like I actually like booked the role. Like I was like I kept putting it off and off and off, and I finally like played it. Yeah. Um, and I love it. Um, but it was one of those things like I, uh, I, I, I got I grew up with FF7 mostly through Kingdom Hearts. Yep. Classic. Um, and yeah. then Advent Children because when Advent Children came out, like my friends were just like, "Oh, dude, you need to see this movie. You'll love it." Yeah, it's crazy. And like I, I, I fell in love with that movie i love it so much um like that is like a top 10 yeah. favorite film of all time it's so me. great it's like it's so great i yeah. know that there's people who are just like oh it's 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 like not good and i'm just like yeah you're not paying attention man it's fantastic there's so much awesome yeah, action I, I love that movie. yeah absolutely but yeah no it's it's such an awesome like legendary franchise and uh it's kind of cool because for you you know one of being one of the new characters in it Right, it's not like you were you were kind of inserted uh, as like, you know, they're expanding it even bigger than it already is. This awesome franchise, yeah. so it's like you're there's just no like a cherry on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no expectations for Roche, and so like I can kind of you know, just really have fun with it and like set the expectations you know, a- along with you know the Japanese actor, obviously. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. But like you know, there's there, nobody knows what's gonna happen with Roche, so it's just like, oh. We all get to go in blind in this one. <laughs> yeah, it's really exciting. And I think I actually said this a while ago. I was like, I figured out why some of the purest, like, again, this is a very, very small percentage of people, like these extremist yes. purists who are like, you change any pixel from the original and it, you know, it's, it's not as good and stuff. Like, I figured it out why some of the new additions uh, to the story, I won't even say changes, just some of the cool stuff they've added to FF7 Remake drives some of these, these, you know, archaic mindset, purist insane. It's because for 23 years, they've been like the know-it-all purist who can just say like, actually, yeah, this is what happens with Sephiroth. This is what happens with Genova. Yeah, this is what happens with this. And for the first time in 23 years, they don't know what's going to happen with like Roche, for example. It's like, so they can't, you know, they can't tell you what's going to happen. So I think it's- Yeah, it takes them off guard, yeah. Who are used to just being like, I know everything, listen to me and everything. So I think it's great though that they're able to expand it. And it's like, we're back in 1997- getting to experience it all over again and it's so oh much yeah fun. yeah like I, I i i adore playing through both of them and i've actually now played through 7r i think i'm in like i don't know i i i go through and i pick like different chapters that i want to play well like as far as like full front to back playthroughs i think i've done it now five or six times oh that's amazing two years since it's come out yeah now you just streamed uh, FF7 before this. How did it go? Uh, it was fun. Uh, we played. I played it on hard mode. I um, I've got the airbuster fight down to a science on hard mode now. Oh just, yeah, that's a fun like, fight. I, I lost the first time because I'm just like uh, weird controls. Like I don't remember how to do this. Um, and also because <laughs> I'm I'm using a new capture card and I need to get a longer um, 
I, I, I need to get like a longer USB cable for my controller Got because it. I think I, 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 my theory, I don't, I don't think it's because of the capture card, but I think um, what I would like push forward and then left and it would keep going forward and it wouldn't register my button presses. Uh. I think it's because my PS4 is outside of this room and there's a wall in the way. That could be um, it if it's like Bluetooth, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's what that's my that's my theory. Um, but other than then, like the occasional like you know control lock um, or whatever <laughs> you'd call that, um, yeah. which was no fault of the game, obviously. That's you know weird technology being weird. Yeah. Um, like it was fun. Like I uh, I kicked Reno's butt. I beat the Airbuster. I um, uh, had fun with the. Uh, I, I skipped forward to the. Um, motorball oh yeah that fight that's a crazy fight um and then i got up through the part in the um the arbiter of fate fight where you beat um the red arbiter for the first time and then you fight the blue and yellow one with barrett yep um and lost (laughs) but it was like i'm like you know what i don't really care like we're gonna be going on with phil in a few minutes so you know if if (laughs) i die here it's all good because there's no way i'm gonna beat sephiroth in five minutes I mean, um, yeah, that's that's a tough fight. Like on yeah. uh, hard mode, anything can get you if you're not like super on it. But that's that's why I oh, love yeah. the game. Like, and like you said, kind of playing it multiple times and everything. I remember finishing it and then going back to hard mode, and it just solidified how good the battle system is in this game. Because when they oh, take yeah. away items, you're forced to like get good at the battle system, but it's rewarding. Yep. Like the more time you spend with it, and it's just once you get it all down to a science, like if you re-strategize, you 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 will win. Like you are rewarded for it. Oh yeah, and I love that. And it's the first, um, the first battle system I've ever encountered where when I play and I do something cool, I don't just keep playing. I go, ooh, ooh, <laughs> oh yeah. damn! Like, like I actually like I'm having fun with it, and I'm like, like yeah. I'm really vocal when I play this game, and I'm vocal with it when I'm alone, and mm. I'm not a super vocal when I play games by myself. Like even if I get mad, I'm just like. <sighs> but like <laughs> yeah. with this like i like i hoot i holler i have a grand old freaking time with the battle system in this game like That's it's awesome. my favorite ba- like rpg battle system like of all time i love it yeah and you guys know i'm like a film nut so the slow-mo cinematics it's just oh, yeah. it's so varied and like i love a good example of of the opposite is ff13 fantastic battle system so much fun it's it's polished to like a spit shine it's so well polished but there's not a lot of variety. It's just this fast, crazy pace every single mm-hmm. battle, every single time, and it's very flashy. But the fact that it slows down in seven, you kind of take that breath. <sighs> okay, let's go through our menus, and it feels oh, yeah. like old Final Fantasy. Let's go through our menus and everything, and then you get to okay, back to the crazy action. Like it's and, so and good. every character plays so differently. So like you know, like you know, you've got Cloud, which is like a mix of like this fast and slow. Yeah. And there's Barrett, who's like exclusively slow, mm-hmm. and then you get. Tifa, who's you know you playing like a freaking Tekken character, yes, <laughs> who occasionally takes a break into DB DB Fighter Z, yeah, exactly. How fast she moves. It's just like, all right, yeah. we're doing this, okay. <laughs> I I agree, I agree, and I, yeah. I, it looks like Chad agrees too. Yeah, the combat is so clean; it has real weight to it. Yeah, that's the other thing is yes. it's not just like um, I love Kingdom Hearts to death, but the battle I was system in the that exact same thing. Yes. Yeah, I love it to death, but the combat is like it's so. Uh, it's so exaggerated, it's so weightless, it's so like uh, big and it's floaty and floaty. You mm-hmm. lacks a little bit of that realism, whereas this is just like a uh, a nonstop Uh-oh. anchor. It's okay, it's gonna do that once in a while. It's like a yeah. nonstop anchor, and it just keeps you like in that. Oh, there's a weight to the Buster Sword. It's not just like you know uh, a twig, and that that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Like I I I had that realization the other day where I I I, I don't remember like I was talking to somebody. Who was I talking to? I might have been talking to Riker. You know what? I was talking to Riker because I remember the conversation was in the car. So I was talking to Riker. Um, uh, if you did, for those of you who don't know, Riker is my uh, my fiance. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was talking to him, and I was like, I think I know why I pr- I prefer FF Seven Remakes Battle System over Kingdom Hearts, and it's the weight, the yes. like like you know very tangible, like how how good it feels to just go wham, like you know with with the keyblade like i love hitting things with the keyblade but for one thing like it, it feels like you're hitting something with a stick yes um and it sounds like it because you get because you get the you get yeah it sounds sound it does sound like that keyblade. it's kind of like that yeah um where with you know 
the the Buster Sword, like he swings it, and it looks like it hurts when when somebody gets hit with it, and you hear <clears throat> it's just yeah. like oh yeah, like, and we can talk about sound design. All the I mean, this game's sound design is just. So oh, it's good. off the charts. Yeah. And not to say off Kingdom Hearts isn't. Like, Kingdom Hearts is just, it's more fun. It's more Disney. Like, they don't need to have, oh, like, yeah. bones crunching. <laughs> it, it, it's <laughs> exaggerated in different ways. Yeah. That, like, one's very cartoony, so. exaggerated, and one is, like, hyper-realistic. Yeah, exactly. And they like, yeah, really... Like, oh, over, over, over-realism, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's what's cool, because it's so over-the-top that with the, uh, with the Buster Sword, that it, uh, it makes sense that you have to show some realism, or it's, like, too crazy. So yeah, it's awesome. I wasn't sure if that was a bot, but it's Streamlabs. I'm just like, what on earth is that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> listen, it's a coded me and Aaliyah speaking code. I, all right, I've I've been on 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 guard with bots because I had one in yeah. the middle of the st- of my stream, and I'm just like, no, fuck awesome. Off. awesome. <laughs> hey, even Spencer, you want to say hi to Austin? You can say hi to me. Spence is gonna say hi. He is. Uh, you guys know from my documentary, he is uh, the guy who went to me with China. And really, really close friend, and lived at the Shaolin Temple as well. Yeah, come say hi. Hello, hello. Ah, you too got right your butt kicked by warrior monks. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> More than me, somehow. Probably just longer time. But. I was watching some of your TikToks about that. I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's, like that yeah. looked like it hurt. Totally, totally. But it we looked had a cool as hell, though. Thank That's you. A fun time. Mm-hmm. We had a fun time and stuff. And yeah, oh, he's, I bet. He, I, I always talk his ear off about Final Fantasy. And uh, I think I've showed you some, of your, some of your work. Have you seen Austin's work? Yeah, you've seen Roche. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I was, I was, was present when, when Phil inter- interviewed you for the first time. Yeah, it was a really, really good time. That, that was about a year and a couple months ago. I think we were talking about it, Austin. It was yeah, almost a year ago. It was ago, a year and of, some change. Yeah. Yeah, over, as of like last month. So yeah, it's been a lot of fun. But yeah, do you have any questions for Austin? that i can think of i, right, I cool. just popped in so yeah, he's just I'll popping just start in listening in awesome <laughs> yeah very nice to meet it's you. super chill if you have a, if you think of one come back we'll give you <laughs> okay awesome All same right. for chat guys super informal interactive interview if you guys have questions we're taking it from chat as well yes i should probably be keeping an eye on chat yeah yeah like I said, also i love the, the the light that you've got in the back because it adds like as it like fades through it adds this nice like backlight to your face yeah and it's just you. like that's so cool <laughs> that's why i did mean, it thank meanwhile you. i've just got a light above here and i'm just like Hello, it's very really it's very bright. heavenly though it looks like you're rising <laughs> <laughs> it's cool man. i looked at the light for too long hold up okay, oh, yeah. I'm good. okay. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at the light <laughs> don't go um, what year did I start recording for FF7R? Um, I started recording FF7R in 2019. 2019. So I, I, I came on like near the end. Um, I, I think I think the two the the two who really came on like the two named characters who came on at the end were myself mm-hmm. and um, Max Middleman's uh, uh, Red Thirteen. Oh, Red Thirteen, yeah. Yeah, I think yeah the two of us came on like right at the end. Um, awesome. Very cool. Now, somebody asked earlier, actually, in chat, do we think that Red's going to be playable? I mean, absolutely, for me in the future. Oh, I, I, I believe so. Yeah. I, I, I have no idea, um, but I would imagine so. I can't imagine Red 13 not being playable. Yeah, it's too iconic. And, I mean, they're, they've they been so faithful with like all the stuff that you can do in the original game mm-hmm. that we'll, we'll be doing all the stuff, yeah. Uh, and, we'll be doing a lot. And Intergrade really, like it gave us some interesting updates to the combat that I'm really looking forward to seeing if they expand oh, on that in the future. Yeah. Cause it's just like, Ooh, hmm, I have a ooh. cool idea. I'll share with you since you mentioned it for part two. And, you know, we'll talk more about this later, but how cool would it be for combat? If, uh, I always talk about this on stream. Like if there was a camping, I don't know if you played FF 15, Austin. Have you- oh, I love 15. It's, oh, perfect. It, it was the second FF game I ever played. That's right. You've mentioned you like Prompto, right? So I love Prompto. That's that's I got a Prompto body pillow like in the other room. He's got a Prompto body pillow. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, we love Prompto. Dude, what, what did you say, Riker? Yeah, he does. <laughs> Riker in the distance. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's great. I got the body pillow here. Yeah. So I had this idea. I was like, man, imagine FF fifteen camping, right? But it's like more interactive. That would be so cool. Yeah, it's more interactive than that, and there's like mini games, and imagine being able to like walk around camp and chill and talk to people, dialogue trees and stuff. But imagine that you develop these relationships with the characters, mm-hmm. and they get deeper, and then say like, because you know we had those team attacks with uh, with um, Sonon and Yuffie. 
Imagine yes. that the deeper relationship you get with, like, say, Tifa, Yuffie, uh, Sid, Bear, whatever, like, you get these unlocked that would team be attacks. So cool. Yeah. And then maybe, like, the um, climax is you get, like, a double limit break or something. They could do so much. Oh, that would be radical. Yeah. They could do that would so be so much. cool. It would be so much fun. So yeah, we'll see what happens. But um, so, yes, as a writer, as well as an actor, Austin. What does it mean yes. to be part of such a rich narrative and has that inspired you in your writing like Megaton Girl and otherwise? Um, so it, it is extremely inspiring, but it hasn't influenced Megaton Girl, I think. Right. I mean, I you started that. it so long ago, right? Megaton. Yeah, I've started Megaton. I started Megaton Girl back in 2012. Um, but I'm sure that FF7 in general, I'm sure that Advent Children has had a massive influence on Megaton Girl because like I love big flashy anime battles yeah yeah and that movie is the king yeah. of big flashy <laughs> anime battles pretty much yeah. um and I, I envision so much of megaton girl with like that kind of like that that in your face sakuga style mm -hmm. like uh like like trigger yeah where it just like you know it just gets like real in your face like especially when connie does her gut buster yeah um that's perfect but uh um, there's so much of that kind of vibe in Advent Children and in Remake. Yeah, um, so totally. I, I it, it's influenced more my 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 direction style in terms of like where I take like the sound design and all that stuff. Um, I love that yeah. more than the more than the writing overtly because like it it allows me to like be like okay like what kind of vibe do I want to go for? Like, do I want to go for an FF7 vibe with this fight? Do I want to go for a DBZ fight with this vibe with it with which tends to be more often than not because of how much energy is involved there uh, episode five is so dragon ball z that people's minds are going to explode really oh that's oh exciting. yeah <laughs> that's exciting um, yeah um, i've been looking forward to episode five for a while it's uh, gonna be an interesting interesting um it, it is the direct halfway point of the arc because we've got oh. four episodes before it and four episodes after episode five very cool um so and and that's just this arc. I've if there's interest, I could do another whole season at least. Really? Um, oh, that's amazing. Because I know where I would take season two. Well, I was going to ask: Do you have um, like a full uh, arc and like several arcs in mind? How far out do you have a uh, vision? I, I I have at least two arcs planned. Um, the, amazing. Um, basically. Arc one is the rise, and arc two would be like the title defense. If I had to like explain, yeah, it. yeah I love you that. Know? Yeah, yeah, it, like it's it's arc one is Little Mac rising to the top to beat the crap out of uh, Sandman. <laughs> yep, and then arc two would more or less be you know Connie as Little Mac defending her title. Love it. I had to, love it. Yeah. So Aaliyah asked in chat, "What's what's your currently uh, your favorite anime, Austin? If you're watching." My favorite anime uh, right now i actually i haven't been watching a lot right now because i've been working so much on megaton girl i was mm -hmm. watching my hero academia cool. um but um i don't know like i i think i left off right at the very end of season three um and i just i hadn't picked it back up yet because i i didn't when I started working more like full time on Megaton Girl, I didn't want that to like have any influence on Megaton Girl and have somebody be like, "This is from My Hero Academia." Like, so I'm just like, <laughs> no, I'm not gonna even touch My Hero Academia until I'm done with Megaton. Girl. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, That's yeah, a really good idea. Like, I don't want it to like you know someone to like even if it's like subconsciously yeah that's a good point you, it's, it. it tends to like uh, just osmosis into your mind like when you watch stuff, so it's it's probably a good thing. Too, yeah, uh, like I could like like I'm fine with watch, watching stuff that isn't currently airing. Mm -hmm. Like yeah, or, yeah, and like with like the live action superhero stuff, like with Marvel's doing, it's such a completely different vibe. Yeah, it's totally that different. it does it. I'm fine watching that, but because of how anime influenced Megaton Girl is, mm -hmm. I haven't touched a whole lot of that specific show. Um, as for other shows, like uh. Castlevania. I wrapped. Uh, I watched Castlevania. Yeah, season me and Aaliyah five. love Castlevania. Oh my god! I, I love season four. I love season one, two, and four. Yeah, um, we. And I liked season three, but it had some elements to it. I'm just like, 
man. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. It was like, it was, it was good, but yeah, some of it was just kind of like nothing happened the whole season, but it was quite it good. It turned into a snuff film. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> and much. I was just like, okay, I'm not, yeah. I, I don't want to watch that. Yeah. It was pretty rough. And then, uh, yeah, I did like, uh, I did like season four of the newest one. Like it really felt like, at, like true Castlevania, like everything about it was just really, um, like it felt faithful to material and like every scene is like, okay, this is, this is feels like, you know, I'm playing the game again. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing where they take the next arc because they left it off on such a yeah interesting, interesting, interesting bit. So. I, I've heard that they, uh, they're actually going to do symphony of the night next, which is really exciting. Oh, which if oh, you're familiar, okay. it's uh, yeah, it's like okay. a couple generations later and you have Alucard is still alive. Obviously he's immortal. And you have mm-hmm. uh, Trevor's, you know, descendants and stuff. Richter, so. we're gonna yeah. get Richter. Yeah. Richter Bellman, okay. Yeah. So it could be I a hope that they do. I hope that they don't jump directly into Symphony of the Night. I hope that we get Rondo of Blood first. Yeah, totally. It's perfect because he's that's Richter as well. Yeah, because um, I would love to set up Richter before we be like. By the way, Richter is this is another Belmont who you show him up at the beginning of it, and you don't not find out much about him until the end of it, like they did in Symphony of the Night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, totally. I have a confession to make. I don't like Metroidvania, as I did not get very far into Symphony of the Night, but I like the story of it, so I've seen. It's it's story. hard. It's a hard freaking game. Like, that's the one thing yeah. like that is that could keep people away from it. It's freaking difficult, but uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Di- well, and that's Castlevania in general. Yeah, it's Castlevania's yeah. always been like you know the I don't know what to call it like Dark Souls level the back then. But... Difficult, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun though. But speaking mm. of speaking of, speaking of Castlevania, known for its music, um, you also compose music, Austin. So yes, Fa- Final do. Fantasy is very rich musically. Like, what would you say is your favorite Final Fantasy song? And has anything has has any of those songs inspired you? And I know you love Final Fantasy music. And then who is your favorite Square Enix composer? Um, well, Nobu is my favorite Square Enix composer. Like, Hell yeah! Absolutely. Hell yeah! Nobu is absolutely my favorite. Um, I actually, I, I know this. I know the answer to this. I've got it right here. Um, Hell yeah! Because I, I, I made, I made four playlists on my phone. It's my all-time favorite video games like tracks. Hell yeah! Like the one, like games that I assault, like tracks that I just adore. Mm-hmm. And then I split those into three tiers. Uh, diamond, gold, and silver. I love it. It's, it's diamond weird. are my top 100. <laughs> gold are like the are like the ones that I just like you know think are really good, but I wouldn't put in the top 100. Yeah. And silver are just ones that I just really love. But uh-huh. let me go into the diamond playlist. And yes, my favorite Final Fantasy song is One Winged Angel Rebirth. Yes. And then my other um, there's wow there <laughs> there's so my many. top 10 is all give us the top 10 man we love final fantasy here yeah heck yeah well this is this is not just top, this is not just final fantasy but there's so much square enix in this top 10 yeah let's there's, hear it let's hear um it. the menu theme from star fox 64 is my number yes one. yes i um, love that song it's real chill i adore that song like i like i like i feel like i'm just like i'm just like i'm floating like i could put that song that's one of the few songs that i can put on the 10 hour version of yeah and listen to at least five of those hours <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah, um, i love that song and then uh, that's number one. Number two is One Winged Angel Rebirth. Uh, three is um, the uh, Weight of the World, the End of Yorha from Near Automata. Um, Near Automata. Mm-hmm. Um, awesome. Number four is uh, the menu theme. The uh, menu one, I should say, from Melee. Yes, menu one is so good. Yeah, I love the. Bum, so ba-da-da, bum, 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 bum. I love iconic. That. Uh, number five is. Since it's now officially been in a game, I can put it on the video game list. Uh, Advent One Winged Angel. Yes, definitely. Um, is in Smash Bros. Next, yeah. next is Midgar Expressway Long Version. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm very uh, good. The Airbuster. Oh, Undertale. So mm-hmm. Midgar City of Mako. And then the Super Smash Brothers Melee opening. Yeah, that's great too. That's a great yeah. song. Airbuster that's, is insane. That's the 10. Airbuster's like a like a, a journey throughout the entire it's song. It's so good. Like I, yeah. I, I love like I love the whole thing, but like the like I'm just like, man, this version rules. But then the minute that I was sold on it, like being like a top ten was the part where you hear the choir go, yeah. Ha, 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 yeah. Ha, ha. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. With the yeah. drums there, we're going Yeah, yeah, he's got so high. 
Yes. Yeah, it's great. And it, it's cool mm-hmm. because it's like most of the songs, it um, it feels just like the original, but, you know, better quality, yeah. real instruments and everything. Yeah. It's got the spirit of the original. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. And we were talking about, I don't know if you've heard of or have partaken in the Pixel remasters. Awesome. But not yet. I want to do that in stream. Awesome. And uh, you, I, have, you I haven't played should. most of those games. <laughs> yes. So that'll be fun for people, I think. Oh, absolutely. And uh, one of the things that's been really a joy about that has been the music because they, uh, you know, those songs we never heard with real instruments, right? It was all just like the sound font of the NES, Super Nintendo. And stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. been really cool because Nobuo actually came back and completely oversaw the entire thing. So it's not just like, yep. hey, we'll have people, you know, rearrange it without his insight and everything. So it has just been a musical, like, smorgasbord oh, yeah. the entire thing like emotional emotional levels of music so it's been so much fun i i really love that like two of my like mo- like people who have super influenced me mm-hmm. worked on roche in some way he was partially designed by nomura yeah yeah um and that's huge dude. several of his theme songs are were overseen by nobu and i i believe that ignition flame was actually arranged by nobu that's what it says, uh, yeah. Nobuo, That's what say. it says officially. Yeah. So I, I think you're right. I do. Yeah. Um, um, so cool. So cool. Uh, Sakuraba is who does uh, Dark Souls, right? Unless I'm wrong. Oh, I do have some Dark Souls music on here. Yeah, there's I, some I, really moody I, stuff. I, I, I like Dark Souls music. I prefer Bloodborne. The, mu- the, 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 the music for Bloodborne is more my, more my speed, I guess. Like mm-hmm. I, I really like some of like the really heavy stuff in dark souls. Yeah. But there's just something about the tone of bloodborne that I'm just like, <sighs> yeah, that like gothic <laughs> London. It's, it's so good. It's yeah. So good. Do we have any bloodborne fans in the chat? Yeah. It's, it's, I guarantee you we got a few. It's an amazing game. <laughs> yeah, I watched my fiance play it. And then I watched the game grums play it. That's awesome. So as, yeah. as far as your career is concerned, what does Roche mean to you, and how much of a milestone was that in your journey as an actor? Because you said it was like huge to book that, right? Oh, it's a it was absolutely massive. Like I cried when I booked it. Oh, I bet. Um, because I was like, like, like realizing what that meant when I booked it. I was like, oh my god, I'm in Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, that's... like this is probably one of the best things that will ever happen to me. Period. Yeah. Um, just like. Uh, as far as like things that are deeply meaningful to me, mm-hmm. that is, is legitimately one of the best experiences that I've ever had. Um, and the fandom has been so welcoming and so kind. And it's just, that's made the whole thing even better. Yeah. Um, and bet. getting to, you know, talk with some of the cast members who have all been lovely, like, especially like, um, I, I last year at some point last year, I, I had dinner with a uh, uh, lunch with, with John um, and he is just the sweetest human being in the universe. John Eric Bentley. <laughs> yeah. The voice of Barrett. Yeah. If you guys don't yeah. know. Yeah. And he, he, he radiates so much just positive energy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been incredible. Like Roche is like one of the best characters I've ever played. There's one character that literally by look how close my fingers are that <laughs> much. Yeah tops Roche in, in my brain as like my favorite. And it's literally only because um, of the circumstances around the recording of that particular character. It's a character named Alejandro mm-hmm. um, who um, this is the Australian, a, right? Yeah. He's a big Australian bird from a show called the beach buds. He's a, <laughs> he's a, um, he's a Balinese starling. Um, and he looks kind of like, uh, he's got kind of like almost like a Maui vibe about him. And he's got a, he's got a big old thing of hair. He's called, we call, we call him his poof, big old <laughs> hair poof up here. Um, that's great. And I, <laughs> I really had so much fun recording that character because I got to record it with other actors. It was the first time I'd ever like been a oh. part of like a half year long thing yeah. where I was in the booth with other actors working oh, off of them. That's amazing. And yeah. That experience actually influenced my direction style. Really? Because I direct in that way, like as if like we are at in the booth reading, I will like read it read the actor into the into the line with with the line before it and it leads to such a natural delivery. Yeah. And I don't have to get many retakes in it when when I do that. Like I, I we we tend to run it through twice. 
and I don't need to I don't need a third take more often than not because of that. Wow. That's um, that says a lot about your direction too. It's just like got it. Yeah, mm-hmm. like like seriously, like like Megaton Girl rules because the actors take direction so well. Um but yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Very mm. exciting. And yeah, that's like for people who aren't into acting, like it's a huge part, uh, depending on the actor, of course. It's a huge mm. part of a lot of the choices like certain actors make is playing off of each other, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, some people Absolutely. are very like script analysis, like have made all the choices. But for a lot of people, it's like you really, really get the energy of what's happening in the room and stuff. So that's got to be huge, uh, especially for oh, voice yeah. acting. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, getting to develop a chemistry with actors over the course of six months mm-hmm. is something that you don't get a whole lot yeah. in voice acting because we do it mostly by ourselves. Totally. But like getting to develop these characters in their own way um, and, and getting to know all of these actors. We're now, th- this this whole team, um, we are like lifelong friends now. Oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah. we, we text each other literally every Tuesday. Um <laughs> Oh, we, yeah. we had this um, we had this thing that we used to do. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going off on a really long tangent. I apologize. It's okay. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we used to do this thing where um, I don't remember who started who who initiated the the conversation, but somebody said something, something, and then someone else responded with namaste. Mm. And we recorded on Tuesdays, and I responded with Namas Tuesday, and so now we text each other every Tuesday and say Namas Tuesday. That's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah, there's there's nothing like it, and I, I've yeah. heard voice actors say, you know, they've had the opportunity to meet their fellow cast and like, mm-hmm. you know, then get to know each other, and that has like helped their performances, the chemistry. But yeah, it's you're usually alone in the booth. Yeah, um, yeah. I was alone with Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, that's yeah. the traditional way, right? So mm-hmm. That's really cool. But uh, speaking of speaking of FF Seven. Roche is so dynamic and so extreme, like as a human, you know, he's, he's all over the place, but he's so pure in like the way he operates. What do you think drove him to be this way? This could get into, you know, our theory territory because a lot of it's not known, right? But with this, I don't know how much I can actually say. I don't know. I'm trying to think what okay. I can actually like. For, as far as I can tell, the thing that drives him is that he he wants to go fast and nobody else does. Yeah. <laughs> like, he just, like, he doesn't give a shit. That's his whole thing, is he just, you know, he wants to live life his way, and anybody else who can't keep up with him doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, you know, like, that's, that's to me, that is everything that Roche is in my head. And if you can keep up with him... Then you're going. You've 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 got a friend for life, whether you want it or not. <laughs> yeah, like Yuffie, <laughs> like Yuffie, and that's the thing with with Yuffie, man. So much was uh, is yeah. I think Roche is is third class soldier. Yeah. Yes, he's um, a third class soldier. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the cool thing about Yuffie is uh, that you know we saw it with Cloud, and you you kind of apt to think like, oh, that's that's like a very unique thing that he did with cloud like this whole friendship thing but i love with yuffie at the end of that conversation like yes we are friends and she's like excuse me it's so mm-hmm. funny it's so funny and it just shows that he's such a uh like a pure guy in the moment and everything he's literally you know like giving a soliloquy to nothing you know yelling for cloud well, like he's the, not even <laughs> yeah, the, the dude feels like a theater kid like seriously yeah, like, yeah. he like he he like i i i can't wait to see if he's had any interaction with Genesis, because oh, that would my make God. so much sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> it really would. It really would. It's uh, perfect. I yeah, just, I can just see those two just reading love lists off of each other. Yeah, he's just like, oh, yes, my God. perfect, and go starts going off on a tangent. Infinite is mystery yeah. is the gift of the goddess. Infinite yeah. mystery is the gift of the goddess. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so good. That would be so good. Yeah. We will see. Uh, somebody mm. said, uh, Roche is pretty much Maverick from Top Gun if he was an FF7 character, and it works. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You can be my wingman anytime. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Love that. I love that. But yeah, so uh, Roche has such a fire and tenacity in his way of living. Do you relate to Roche in any way personally, Austin? Um, yes and no. 
Um, he goes a bit too hard, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But like, I don't know. Like, I relate in the way that like I've basically lived my life like ever since I became an adult, and I started like realizing that I don't need to like limit myself to one career. Right. I've basically just been like, okay, I'm just gonna do what I want, and I'm gonna get paid for it. Love that. So like, yeah. I just, I just, you know, if there's something I want to do, I go for it. <laughs> as long as I can, you know, as long as I have the resources to do it, I go for it. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I'm very similar uh, with a lot of my stuff that I do. You got to just take chances sometimes too in life, you know? It's yeah. Too short. So yeah, absolutely. That. But he certainly is uh, <laughs> is like another echelon of, of pushing stuff. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, he's, he's, he's pushed it beyond the red line more times than I can count at this point. Yeah, yeah. And again, <laughs> we, we have our theories why, right? Like, you know, possibly could be a shorter lifespan. There's a lot of reasons why he's he could be living in the moment so much, which is, you know, we'll have to find out. Uh, in part two and stuff, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'd love to see him and Cloud have kind of like a, uh, a jet stream Sam and Raiden kind of a thing going on. That would be awesome. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. I hope so. Yeah, it seems like they've set it up, and again, it's just it's about if they execute it or not. But I, I think not only have they done that, but they've they've kind of set the uh, the standard that maybe we'll see some class, uh, some second class soldiers, you know, at some point too. I think that'd be really maybe. cool. Maybe. I don't know. I yeah. have no idea. I, I've, I've I've said for the longest time, and again, this is just random ideas, I think it'd be so cool if we had a, a female second class soldier who like is a foil to Roche. I think that'd be so cool. Like imagine totally if agree. she's super like, you know, serious. And then you have her and Roche kind of like, and she's just like, stop. <laughs> he's like yeah that let's would be go. pretty cool that would be so looks like good. your battery your camera battery is about to die okay no we will switch it the moment it goes uh don't don't be stressed out guys this is always a this is always a meme on stream the stress <laughs> of the- <laughs> don't worry don't worry imagine yeah. roche riding a shark when cloud shows up at the squad <laughs> <laughs> so- see i just i just imagine him specifically riding king shark that would be <laughs> King Shark is a shark. That's awesome. <laughs> Tragic indeed. Yeah. That would be dope. Yeah, maybe it'll happen. You never know. He would be yeah. the perfect character to show up at Costa del Sol. He really would. Like, I think so. It would just fit so well. <laughs> or the gold saucer. Oh, the gold saucer. Yes. It's so true. Yeah. We'll see what happens, man. We'll see what happens. Yeah, we we had a talk last night, Austin, with uh B, another awesome streamer. And she made me think of an idea where, uh, picture this, gold saucer, you know, you have the dates and everything with like, you know, Tifa, Mm -hmm. Aerith, Barrett and everything. Imagine if you had the Wall Market trio show up at gold saucer, because think about it, Andrea from the Honey Bee Inn, he's a world renowned dancer, choreographer, owner, like it is not at all strange for them to be like guest performance by Andrea over at the Mm -hmm. stage because... There's something he says to Tifa after the pull-up contest. He says, "I love, uh, I'd love it if you would take the stage with me one day, Tifa." Imagine if during the oh, there's B in chat. How you doing, B? Uh, and we just got that video up on my YouTube channel. If you guys want to check it out, I'll link it as we talk. But yeah, how cool nice. would it be if that all happened? You know, Chocobo Sam was there and stuff. There's just that would so be many. So cool. Yeah, I think it's possible. I think it's. Possible. I think that would be super neat. I, I, I'd love if we also got. Um some stuff at the gold saucer dealing with um with jesse yes because even, she was even, a even if it's just like the fallout of what happened at, at when the plate fell mm-hmm. like i feel like that would be really interesting i agree i think it'd be perfect we will uh yeah. we will see what happens um yeah guys there's the link if you want to see to the gaming channel uh we had beyond last night it was a blast we'll have this up too uh probably tomorrow the uh the austin talk if you guys are just coming in now and missed the in- the intro but um, really, really, really cool ideas with B, and I think I think that'd be a cool way to tie it together. But now I'm thinking about Roche in Gold Saucer, man. Right? How, how would he tie that'd into it? That'd be super it? cool. So yeah, I think it would be. Uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun. We'll see what happens. Multiple dates on Gold Saucer confirm. Well, I think they'll do it like the original. Probably let me know if Chad agrees. I think they do it like the original, where you know, depending on your choices, you go on the date with Tifa, uh, Barrett, Aerith, Yuffie, Red, like whoever it is. And uh, I think you know, there's little differences in the dialogue choices and stuff. I think there'd be a lot of fun. But imagine a what? Roche date. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that would be fun. Oh um, man. I I, I I liked that we got that in FF Seven R. Yeah. With pretty with much the um, the, the <laughs> night with the night before um, the Shinra building raid. Yes. Um, because I didn't even know that. 
until like my second playthrough that you could, you know, have that same conversation, but with Tifa or Barrett. Because I got it with Aerith the first time I did it. That's awesome. Um, yeah. But and then when I went back through, I was like, oh shit. You can do this with Tifa? I wonder if you do it with Barrett. I looked at Barrett's, and Barrett's is my absolute favorite. Barrett's made me full on cry. I was gonna say which which was your which made you the most emotional because they're yeah, all that good. One. They're all good, man. Or I love Yuffie. seeing Barrett have his moments of vulnerability. Yeah, totally. And um, that, that scene is huge for Cloud and Barrett's relationship, by the way. Mm -hmm, because you have absolutely. this moment. And this is why Remake is like so, so good. Human, yeah, there's so much humanity to it. You have that scene where, you know, Barrett is is talking to Cloud about all this stuff. And even though Cloud is still kind of himself, like he's not saying a whole lot. He's not like being super comforting and stuff. Like Barrett's figuring him out now. Like he gets yeah. it. Like that's Cloud isn't actually a dick face. He's just like, yeah, and, okay. and Cloud's like, he's just letting him talk. He's just like, you know, yep. he's like, okay, you know what? This guy needs to clearly get this off. Of exactly. Yeah. I'm going to let him do it. Yeah. And he, he is a good listener. Actually, Jesse yeah. says that to Cloud too. It's like, it's probably because he's so quiet, but yeah, he's a good listener. He just kind of sits there and he's, he's very attentive. Oh yeah. With Roche or Andre. Yeah. I, I think it'd be cool. And there's just so much. And I, I've said this a million times. I think they're not only going to do all the date options and stuff, they're going to dial it up, man. We're going to have probably date options for everybody and everything b says add a sid date too where it's just cloud and him with crossed arms sitting inside that would be funny <laughs> that would be funny b. <laughs> yeah just sid just be like Mind yeah if i smoke <laughs> <laughs> we're in a gondola that'd be so good Not i'm excited asked. man and again i hope like they make the yuffie one mega cringe where yuffie's like oh we're gonna make tiktoks and stuff and he's like no <laughs> that would be so funny I, I i always say this because you know yuffie is like that like age range you know I, i'm on tiktok well, yeah, too austin's on tiktok too check out austin yeah. on tiktok but yeah you know like that kind of like age where it's like oh my god tiktok everything like, it would be so funny Phil's the reason i have a tiktok <laughs> oh yeah that's right i remember we talked about it yeah yeah, yeah. it's fun You're like you should get on tiktok and i was like all right <laughs> <And I got laughs> yeah we were TikTok. talking about something and i was like you gotta get on tiktok because it's so throwaway like you can yeah. just throw stuff up there and it's like yeah sometimes it gets like a million views sometimes it gets like 10 views tiktok is so random man it's so yeah. random uh, the Barrett Dine storyline, yeah. Oh man, mm. Jungle, that's gonna be crazy. That's gonna be crazy. Like the Barrett Dine flashback with John on the. Oh, he's gonna break our hearts, man. He's gonna break yeah, all our John's hearts. Yeah, John's such a great actor. I'm looking forward to ooh, some of his mm -hmm. some of his scenes coming up. Ooh. It's gonna hit hard, but in a good way. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be super heavy, but I'm excited. And I, you know, they're gonna expand it. Another thing, me and B touched on last night was uh, Scarlet. Is such a great character, and man, they've oh, already yeah. like, hinted at it with uh, with the intermission stuff, with uh, you know our good friend Sean Chiplock, who was on uh, yeah, last uh, who <laughs> Austin works with as well, and uh, they've already hinted at like man, Scarlet's got a lot of depth to her. This whole thing where it's her and Nero alone, and she her whole her whole facade crumbles, and she's just like angry and and really uh, upset when she's always so perfect and calm, and you know sassy and stuff in the scenes but it goes away completely and she's like make them suffer super interesting like, it rules yeah i can't wait to see what they do with scarlet like the tifa scarlet fight and stuff they could go so deep with her and then uh as we've seen scarlet was like you know in the war at wutai so there's yeah so much have you but. seen any of um machine abridged final fantasy 7 machine abridged yes a long time ago that's old stuff right that's that's uh, well they just wrapped it up i think last year Oh, okay, maybe um, not, unless the first part was like a long time ago. I think I've seen a, a couple. I, I loved how they handled the Tifa and Scarlet fight. What did they do? Like Scarlet, Scarlet slaps her once and like starts like monologuing, mm -hmm. and then Tifa just like kind of like glares at her and just hauls back and just punches her so hard she goes flying. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. And I think they probably do something similar, Austin, in the mm -hmm. fight. We've talked about this at length on stream, right? But like they can go in several directions with this. I think they can either go like, um, like to just include, find a way to include the scene or just take it out. Hey, what's up, Lycan? Uh One of the ways I thought of is like, man, Tifa is a, mar a, mas a master martial artist, right? Like, she's why would she just start oh, slapping yeah. her? It could be rather than like a contest of who's stronger because it's clear. Um, unless they do build up Scarlet to be a martial artist, that could be a thing. Maybe they show her, you know, work in the bag or something. And it's like, oh shit, Scarlet trains, but that would be interesting. Yeah, they could do that. But another way they could do it is like, it's an, it's like, uh, not arrogance is not the word, but kind of like a, Oh, you want to slap? Like I could knock your ass out right now, but you want to slap? And it's just like this kind of like dominance thing with Tifa. <laughs> oh, we can yeah. slap. We can slap, and then it like evolves into a boss fight, or she just knocks her out. They could they that could play it a couple different ways. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or they just take it out. But I hope there's a boss fight. Like us Crisis Core, you know, fans of that scene in Crisis Core, they got to have a fight on the cannon. Like, it's so iconic. That would be so dope. Yeah, so picture like Scarlet so comes out in a mech or something, and then you beat the mech, and then the slap fight starts. Like, there's a lot of way they can uh, they can do it. Roundhouse to oh, the face, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, good point. Uh, Lily actually makes Lily of Midgar. Maybe she's Mako infused, right? So maybe she has like extra strength. She is in like the freaking experimental development with the likes of Nero and Vice. Like, she could very well be strong enough to, uh, you know, get juiced up on on the sauce. Maybe. Also, hi Lily. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. good to see everybody in chat. Thanks for coming on if you're just joining. We got a giveaway happening uh, a few minutes later tonight, so stay tuned for that. We're giving away some Final Fantasy Pixel remasters, and uh, keep asking your questions in chat. We're taking them. There will be a dedicated question section a little bit later tonight, but you know, if we see stuff right now, we're hopping on it. So, um, If we miss one, make sure to save it for that part. Oh, Scarlet yeah. builds weapons. Yeah, she can also have like you know concealed weapons. There's so much they can do with Scarlet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we shall see. Um, so similar to my last question, Austin, um, maybe you kind of already answered this, but were you inspired by Roche in any way as a person, his way of going about life, his personality, how has it affected you? And are there any other characters you've played who have had similar effects? Um, so Roche, not so much, although I will say that Roche gave me my, uh, my stream sign off. Um, cause I, cause I, I say, try not to dry. I'll, I'll try, try not to die. I'll see you on the road, my friend. Yes. Um, that's awesome. But as far as other characters, like, I don't know. Um, not really. <laughs> I hear you. Really. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Like, like other, there's characters that I've seen a bit of myself in, but none that have really, like, influenced me because, because like, more often than not, like, it's it's the characters, not the, the characters that I play, but characters that other people play that influence me more, I would say. Yeah, I was going to say, too, like, yeah. a lot of your characters are so larger than life, like, it may not be so relatable. So that's why I wanted to ask, like, I was curious, oh, because yeah. you played some really, like, grand characters, some, like, larger than life ones like Roche. And even I'm in, not uh, known for my subtlety. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> True, yeah. No, and even uh, in uh, Kakaguri, uh, what's his name? June, right? Oh, God, yeah, June. Yeah, June he's... is... Probably despicable. the grossest character I've <laughs> yeah. ever played. Yeah, he's like this despicable so guy. So despicable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's kind of like with certain villains, like it's it must be so fun to to go there and just kind of have fun with it, you know? Oh yeah, it, 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 was, <laughs> wow, it was funny recording you. it. <laughs> ah, we got food, everybody. <laughs> it was super fun recording Kakegurui because like the uh -huh. whole time, like myself and the director, like we over, were just yeah. like, like. Like he knew that I uh, that I was uncomfortable. Yeah, and so he really? was like doing his best to just be like, so like, so how you feeling? And I'm like, weird. <laughs> yeah. If if you guys don't know, uh, so Kakaguri is like a gambling show. Me and Aaliyah really liked it. We a had fest. yeah, we had no idea that was you. Like it was so yes. good because we were just like, oh, this guy's a jackass. Like what a gross freak. And then you, I was talking to you after, and I happened to just look at your list of stuff again. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> that was you? Yeah. So yeah, check it out. But he plays this like despicable, gross, like pervert. <laughs> like I don't even know what the word is, but we love that show. Oh, it's it was really such good. Such a good show. The yeah. "you bitch" yeah. line where he screams "you bitch" at the end. Yeah, we did that in one take. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, yeah. you were telling me about this. Weren't they like, "Don't push it" because we don't want to hurt your voice? And I was just like, "No, no, no! Like this is this is his this is like his second to last line. I need to do this right." And like he's, he's just like, all right, well, if you need a second take, we'll do it. And I did it. And he's like, we don't need a second take. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Was... Go off, I guess. Way to flex. <laughs> Go off, I guess. No, that was that was great. Yeah. You got to definitely see that show, Spencer. It's like in absurd insanity. It's bonkers. Yeah. It's a really fun show. It's pretty disturbing at times, but it's like, it's oh, so it's far removed. Disturbing. It's so far removed from reality. It's just like okay, like it's just fun almost. The, you know? It is, no, yeah. for sure. The whole thing with the girl with the eye patch. Oh god! Don't even get me started. Oh <laughs> yeah. my god! It was funny as hell when we were recording the scene where like he goes up to, where she goes up to him, and she and she's just like, "You want a real thrill?" <laughs> and, and like, <laughs> and, like afterward, the director was just like, "Okay, I know we've got to move on." But you need to see the scene that follows it because it's so buck wild. And it's the scene where, you know, she plays Russian roulette with herself. Yeah. And I was just like, I think this show is off the shits. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> because 
you see the first episode and you're like, oh, this is crazy. And then it's just like escalates so much so further. It just keeps that. getting, it's like, yeah. this can't get worse. Like me and, uh, <laughs> well, actually, I could pretty much say Spencer got me into Baki technically, but you also love it. Oh my God. Yeah, me and my. Have you ever seen Baki? Baki? No. It's like the most, and this is Spencer's world of expertise, <laughs> but it's like the most ridiculous. Just type in Baki, like B-A-K. drawings. It's B A K I. Like everybody looks like Juju Mufu or some like in, inhuman freak. Like everybody's physique is so massive. Baki the Grappler? Yes. yes, but there's the that's the old one, and then there's the new one on Netflix just called Baki. Uh-huh. It's insane. And if anybody's seen it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But you see the first episode, you're like, this is ridiculous. This is this is too crazy. They can't do that. <laughs> and then like the next episode is exponentially crazier. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, else I'm good for now. We'll whenever whenever you're ready, we'll take a few minutes and then we'll do the giveaway. So <laughs> Be eagle-eyed in chat, guys. It's almost time. But yeah, I'm going to just chow down and keep chatting. You need anything? No, I'm good. Let's see here. Chilling? All right, awesome. Um, if, you, if you have any questions for Austin, too, just, if you ever think of one, feel free to hop in. Aaliyah. I'll, I'll, take, in I'll take questions from anybody. I'm, I'm here as long as you want me. Hell yeah. <laughs> I've, got nothing going, I've, not, I've got nothing else going on tonight. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but we always love having you, so it's, uh, it's super chill. And let's see. My next question is... What is your Final Fantasy dream role? Now, I'm not going to limit this just to FF7. Like, have you ever seen any characters where you're just like, oh, and again, if you're just joining, he's also played Sid, Austin. Yes, I played Sid in Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon. Yeah, so open Um, up to all of Final Fantasy. Is there someone who you're just like, oh, that would be fun? I would would love... (sighs) Hmm. Probably... Kefka or Kefka. Mog. Oh, Mog, yeah. You mean Kefka like FF6? Mog. FF6 Mog? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've 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 Bro, played a bit of I've played a bit of 6. Yes. Actually, you know what? Scratch Mog. I'm going to say Zell. Yeah, Zell. 8. The Jorts yeah. man himself, Aaliyah. Please. Yeah, I uh one of the, the first time me and Aaliyah were like courting, whatever word you want to use. <laughs> And uh, after I met her at Comic Con, dressed as Tingle from Zelda in a skin tight green suit like a lunatic, um, <laughs> she <laughs> that's that's a story. That's a story. Right but yeah, at least she knew I was insane from from the first moment. But yeah, so she comes to my stream for the first time. I was like, you should stop by my stream sometime. But it just happens that I'm playing FF8. Like the moment she joins, like screaming at the screen, and it's like Zell versus some big ass dragon and stuff. And she's she's never yes. seen Final Fantasy at this point. And she's just like. What is this game? First of all, why is this man yelling like a lunatic? There's a man like in jorts just punching a dragon. And stuff. <laughs> like, what is going on? Well, I love that he also he like headbutts too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so funny, man. It's it's so out there. And FF8 like, is actually my first experience with Final Fantasy in general. Oh, I love FF8 because I played the Pizza Hut demo disc of eight. The Pizza Hut demo times. disc. Who remembers yeah. that? I'm switching the battery. Don't worry. What's wh- who remembers that shit? Seriously. Yeah, because I, I love that demo disc. Because apparently, with the demo disc, they changed up a few things. Because like you don't uh, you don't do the um, the beach um, the beach storm with yes. selfie mm-hmm. in the um, in the final game. You do in the final game. You do it with selfie, but in the demo, you do it with um, uh, Rinoa. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, huh? But that because that, like that, that was that was also my first introduction to summons because leviathan was the first summon that i ever saw yep oh Uh, ff8 is i was talking about last night again with b like oh b by the way you can do this if you want she says let's hear a kevka laugh oh geez hold up let me turn down my mic (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know i'm gonna do it how he actually does it in the game he goes because he does the that's yeah no it's really good really <laughs> well, because that's that's what it sounds like in the SNES. Because I'm just because they, they do the whoop, 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 whoop. and so I'm like, how would you translate that into you know? So you go. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that you gotta go. Whoop, you gotta go up with it. That's great. Yeah, it sounded just like it. Says Lily. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That's not the only like I got. I, I I also can do like if I really try. Hold up, I need I need a drink first before I do. Oh, it. drink up. Yeah, this is wild. Damn it! Hold up. I 
can kind of do it sometimes. I, I did it the other day. Wow, that's awesome. There we go. Are you guys hearing? <laughs> that's awesome. That's wild. Yeah. Yeah. He can do Kefka. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he would he would body Kefka. We'll see if they ever do a remake. That would be so much fun if I got to do Kefka. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. Especially There's if they so expanded many that I would too. just have so much fun playing. Kefka, Genesis, like, oh, my God. Yeah. Especially if they expand Kefka. Oh, that would be wild. Oh, Can you imagine? Well, they'd have to. Yeah. They'd almost have to expand Kefka. Yeah. Give him a big, like, backstory and stuff. That would be so cool. We have a I Kefka. I adore yeah. the opening of Six so much. Yes. It's so good. It gives me chills. Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. And the music, of course, like makes 90% of that game because, you know, the visuals oh, are so, yeah. like, you know, not bad, just dated and, like, uh, you know, pixel art. The music yeah. just sets the mood so much. I'm so excited for the pixel remaster of 8 just for the music. Yes. Oh, sorry, 6, be, I should for say. For 6, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be insane. Just, uh, just that opening with the bum 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 bum. It's like, oh sh. Yeah. Okay. We are gonna fill our pants when that drops, guys. <laughs> oh it's yeah. It's gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna be fill awesome. Our pants. Absolutely agree. Yeah. Says Lily. Yeah. It's gonna be wild. Yeah. Oh, thanks for the hydration, Lily. Yeah. We should both hydrate. Yeah. Um, apparently, from what I heard, they want to make FF6. Well, the problem is not, it, it's all about time. That's really the only issue with other remakes because pretty much Kitase and most of the uh, crew of Seven are probably going to retire after a Seven remake. Nomura yeah. is going to keep going. He's like, uh, you know, Wolf of Wall Street. I ain't leaving. You know, he's, he's not going <laughs> Nomura anywhere. Nomura is like, I will go down with this ship. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I love Nomura. I ain't leaving. Yeah. But um, he is going to do Kingdom Hearts. He's going to notice that. Yeah, a lot of them are going to retire. So, it's not so much like, will they do it? It's more like, will the original creators do it? I see them. The most likely ones are like 6, 8, and 10. They get a full-blown remake just because they're the most popular games, you know? Uh, speaking about sales. Um, and I don't know if 10 would get a full remake um, just because of how... Um, because of how fleshed out that it is already. Yeah, true. And um, they did you do the remaster. Yeah, because yeah, the, the, we do, yeah we just got the remaster and the remaster like, it's it's, ten is like the scale of seven remake already. Yes, it's huge. Um, it's so huge. I I don't see them really being able to do much with a remake of ten. They could definitely redo six and heck even nine probably. Oh, so have you heard um, about nine is getting made into an animated series? Did you hear about this? I, I saw that. Isn't that perfect? I, I, everyone yeah. tells me that I should probably play nine at some point, but I'm definitely checking out the anime because, oh my God, that just sounds so yeah. cool. I mean, it's the perfect candidate for that. I think it's probably even better than a, than a game remake because it's just so, um, it has that like beautiful fairy tale feel and everything. It's going to look so bright and awesome. Well, and... I've never seen anything that looks like nine. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like it, Very it, unique. It's, it's got such of it such its own aesthetic even mm-hmm. in even in like final fantasy like there's nothing else in final fantasy like nine yeah there's really not because the yeah, artist it wasn't no more it wasn't amano who drew the characters it has this yeah. really unique uh art style and everything it's, yeah it's crazy Absolutely. stuff so, yeah b says play nine it's, it's a lot of fun just don't play the the horrific mobile port that i played please if unless you hate yourself then do that. I don't play mobile ports of of, of console games. Well, no, that's the problem. That. It, it was the console version, but the PS4, like, you know, uh, PlayStation Network download is literally just the mobile version. So I was like, oh. why is, like, you know, in games when you menu and you're, like, in an FF menu, you'll be like, oh, I'm going to hit it four times and it's going to go, like, down the menu. It has a limiter for, like, fat finger mode on cell phones, so you can't go fast in menus. So it's like, ah, I'm losing my mind. You can hit it four times, and it's like, bloop. And you're just like, ah, I'm losing my mind. Go oh, through the menu. Jeez, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. So it's it'll drive Oof. you insane. And I, I, I suffered through it. <laughs> so. And that's on PS4? That's on PS4, yeah. So just make sure you... Uh, well, the tragedy of it, too, is that it's an uncompressed version of FF9. So you have this beautiful character models. They're not remastered or redrawn, but there's just no compression so you don't have all the the mm. aliasing and the uh the pixelization so you get the like you what get they to did see. with uh the mario 3d all-stars pack exactly it's exactly yeah. the same thing you don't have that compression so it's just it looks beautiful you get to see zane and garnett and everybody 
um, mm. in full full detail, but like the menuing is a disaster, and uh, the backgrounds are a little is rough. Is it the same way? Is it the same way on the Xbox version? Do you know? I assume it is. I would definitely uh, look into it though, just to be safe. It's because like, I have oof. the Xbox version of it. I'm just like, uh, yeah, it was rough, and it took me. I was like halfway through, it and people said like, "Oh God, you're playing that version." So it was too late for me. <laughs> but um, yeah, the Crystal Chronicles artist, exactly, Eyes on B. Oh, uh, okay. It, I love Crystal Chronicles. I was just at a game store and I saw the original version of Crystal Crystal Chronicles on GameCube. Oh I man, was, I, I, I saw it and I was just like, "Oh, that's tempting." That soundtrack <laughs> is so good. If you guys know, mm. thanks, thanks, DK for the hydration. Um, yeah, if you guys don't know that game, at least listen to the soundtrack. It is magnificent. So I, I ended up um, getting. Um, I went. I went to a game store and we ended up like selling like a bunch of old stuff. We sold um, a bunch of like shovelware Wii games basically. hell yeah <laughs> um uh and then we also sold Z- uh, xeno saga part one and part two mm. wait those go for like a pretty penny right those games are so hard to part get. one and part two no part three part three absolutely part one and part two no oh part three is the one i knew one part, of those games part was like three part three like in the store that we were at it mm-hmm. was selling for like 300 bucks oh my god it's yeah. insane um insane but we went in there we, we ended up like selling like a hundred dollars worth of games mm-hmm. and then we ended up leaving with um uh skyward sword and um splatoon 2 so those will probably be some games that i stream here pretty soon oh skyward sword hd i've never played skyward sword so this will be my first introduction to it it's a lot of fun. i know spencer actually loves skyward sword because it's like the mm-hmm. beginning you know, it's the mm-hmm. uh, the the origin of the entire world. I love the story of Skyward Sword. I've just never played the game. I just I, I know the story. Oh, awesome! Yeah, it's um, it's a lot of fun. And I mean, from what I've heard, I didn't have any problems with the original person. I remember having the time of my life. But uh, they fixed like they made a lot of quality of life improvements with the controls. I've heard and uh, mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, yeah, I'm really excited for that. Yeah, we, we I'm got excited some... to finally try bomb bowling. Yes, bomb bowling is that, awesome. I know that Skyward Sword has bomb bowl. <laughs> <laughs> how appetizing yeah it's it's crazy check it out and cool. I, I don't know if we have a lot of zelda fans in chat but i i love zelda so much recently got Aaliyah into uh breath of the wild too and she's enjoying it breath of the wild is something else yeah it's like a spiritual a awakening and gaming for me <laughs> it's so good it really was it was just like this is so different and mm-hmm. i kind of adore it <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, it's the Switch it's has got some level. pretty banger games already. It does, like, like Fire Emblem yeah. Three Houses and stuff. There's some good stuff on the Switch. Yeah, Splatoon Two was like I was addicted to Splatoon Two for a long time, Splatoon. especially the Octo expansion. Oh my god, what the Octo expansion does for the Splatoon lore? Woo boy! <laughs> I didn't even know there's lore in Splatoon. I've not played it myself. Oh, there's so m- well, the whole thing. That's crazy. It's post-apocalyptic. Really? That's surprising. Yeah. You, the, the the final boss of Splatoon 2 v- Vanilla, not the DLC, but Splatoon yeah. 2 Vanilla, you basically fight the Statue of Liberty. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's buck. Well, you have to like put a place a bunch of bombs onto the Statue of Liberty, and it's to cover it with paint. Oh, and it's wow. just, it's insane. It sounds it. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I just have yeah, a... It's, it's crazy. I just have Smash Bros. PTSD from uh, Inkling. So whenever I see it, I'm just like, ah, get away, coward. And then uh, I've never played the games. It seems so fun. They're a ton of fun. I, I love the Inkling. So it's called, Rrrl. I just love, love the, the, the noises <laughs> that they make. That was good. Then the, um, the, 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 the boys, the, the girl, the boy Inklings go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. And then... The God, what do the octolings do? The, uh, the octolings, I know they go. Wow, <laughs> I love the noises that they make, they're cute. That's crazy. So, Lycan just looked it up. We have a uh, 300 to 650 dollars on eBay for part three Woo! of Xenosaga. <laughs> Hachi machi, that is a spicy Xenosaga part three. Yeah, that's God damn, that's crazy. So if is you want, Xenosaga part three the one that has the song God Sib in it, or is that part two? I'm not sure. I played half of part one and then that was about it. i think i got beat so soundly i just stopped i ended up finding god sib on like like the top like best final boss themes of all time and i listened to it and i was just like 
Is it really good? Oh, we gotta Ooh. listen. Mm. It's yummy. Mm-hmm. We're gonna check that out for sure. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be great. Um, oh, yeah. So, looping back around to Final Fantasy. Yes. I What's apologize. up, Yuzora? Uh, <laughs> p- part two of FF Seven. What are your? And this will be super open ended. What are your hopes for part two, Austin? I can say nothing. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I I have I have I I, can, I cannot say anything because I don't know. Mm-hmm. But also because I'm just like, if I say anything, it could be taken as a potential spoiler, even if I don't know what I'm talking about. That's true, that's true. Yeah, and then and, and then Square Enix would be just like, hey, uh, you can't talk about that. <laughs> Goodbye. <saying>. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Nomura shows up. You are leaving, and just like throws you. Um, <laughs> Nomura comes up and he just goes, see you on the road. <laughs> that's rough. That's yeah. rough. He's like, you are now a part of unreality. No, <laughs> that's wild, man. Um, okay, we'll we'll move on though. We don't want to put pressure on you. So, mm. I don't know if you can answer this too because it's kind of similar. We can talk theories, but how do you want FF Seven? You can remove Roche from this fully if you have to. How do you want FF Seven to end fully? And how do you hope Roche factors into that? You can you know cut that out if it doesn't. Um, I mean, I, I would love to see, like, like no matter what they do, I would love to see it just end the way that it did. Because, like, like, I mean, like, but, like, obviously expanded. Because, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like, FF7 ends so abruptly. <laughs> it's, it does. It's, like, it I, does. I, I would love to see that ending expanded upon. Yeah. Because it's just like, hey, things are happening and there's credit. Yeah, and it's like the Earth exploded. Okay. The end. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's like three hundred years later. Oh, did we lose? Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's very open ended. I, I like it because it's very confident in storytelling. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I agree, we need like a definitive end. Um, yeah, I'd lo- I'd love like actual like a, a an end note. Yeah, exactly. To it. Yeah, like a finality. Like even if that end it. note leads into Advent Children, but yes, that would be cool too. There's a lot of theories of like. Will there be? Will they end it so like there there is no more Advent Children? Like, is it changed and stuff? There's a lot of cool theories, but yeah, I agree. No cliffhangers because I I wouldn't want them to after this full ending cycle of going through the compilation and then coming back. Like, it would be a shame if it ends and, and it's like, oh, there's gonna be more sequels. Like, I hope I hope yeah, it fully I, concludes it. I just want this to be yeah. just an end note for the whole franchise. Mm-hmm. I think that like this would be such a great spot yeah. to close off the compilation. Yeah, like it would be perfection. Mm-hmm. Like, like, we, we, <laughs> this is where we started from, and now we're here. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I, I, I really think that that would be ultimately what I would want is just, just an end note of some kind. Yeah, and I think we're gonna get it. I think we're gonna get that. I agree. I, I think they're they're very, um, especially because they said they're gonna retire and stuff. It seems like this is the end of FF Seven. It should be too. It should be. Yeah, so. I, I just love if they just didn't touch it after this. Yeah. I, I just feel like that's just out of out, even just like out of respect didn't mm-hmm. touch it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you don't need a Star Wars Episode Nine situation. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no one, no one needs that. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So again, answer this only if you feel comfortable. Over a year after release, what's the mm-hmm. craziest theory you've heard about Roche? The craziest theory that I've heard. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Because we we've talked about um, our theories last time you were here. I've I have some crazy ones myself, but. Jeez, I've 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 heard some pretty buck wild ones. Yeah. Um I heard one that was that actually ended up being true. What? Like where some <laughs> so, someone was just like, "Oh man, like I bet Roche is going to run into Yuffie at some point here soon and like they're going to be like really good friends." What? <laughs> and I, and and then that ended and then, like, I I read that and I'm just like, "You have no idea how much you just hit the dart like right on it." Wow. <laughs> like, like they had no idea. Like they had no idea. And then it re- when it released, I was just like, I got to see like if this person's got any reactions to it. And they were just like, I was right. And I, <laughs> and I, I was just, I was just so delighted to see them like, like being like so excited that their theory was right. That's so funny. Um, yeah, I love that, that was my favorite one that I saw because it ended up being so true. That's funny. Um, I don't know. I've heard some interesting ones were with um, dealing with like. Um, genesis and like mm. his relationship with genesis um but like I, I can't think of any like off the top of my head i just know that yeah. a lot of the a lot of the fan theories with roche deal with either how he's 
his eventual demise, which, hey, thanks, guys. I want to keep playing this character for a while. Um, <laughs> but also, like, his dealing a lot with, like, his past with Genesis. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because there's hints of, like, the G-cells and everything. It could be... Re- mm-hmm. Yeah, I... I think he's a great character, and we talk about it. The, my favorite idea for Roche that I I thought of right when we started hearing about the uh, like the cell degradation and the accelerated aging of soldiers, like it would be so cool if uh, you know he's so big, he's so, and we talked about this last time, he's so larger than life and so happy and so in the moment that like, and everybody's like, oh my god, he's too much. That you know the characters in the game, like what's yeah. her face, Jesse says like, oh god, like will this guy be quiet as he's laughing and stuff? How sad would it be if eventually we see him? lose himself as like you know he he kind of loses his personality and becomes just almost like marcus like the sephiroth clones we see walking around yeah it would be so tragic and imagine he like asks cloud like you know one last dance or something and then they they fight and they he finishes him off like very kind of there is a quote, demon slayer ish there is a quote from borderlands 2 yeah that fits roche his whole personality and he just his overall arc to a t and really the most buck wild character says it. Tiny, Tiny Tina. Mm-hmm. She says something to the effect of, um, "I'm sorry that I that I, I talk so much and so loud. I'm afraid that if I stop talking, that I will stop." Wow. And that to that's, me, I'm just like that. That's Roche. That's 100 percent Roche. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's a really beautiful line. Damn. And then that line is immediately followed up with a, uh, a, a joke about how a robot's called, Ur- uh, a, a robot's called Uranus. And <laughs> she starts cackling wildly saying, its name is a butt. This is the best day of my life. What was I talking about? <laughs> wow. That's actually kind of cool, though. Got to keep talking. Mm-hmm. Got to keep talking. That's very yep. in character, it sounds like. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's wild, but yeah, I know. There's talk about Hojo and stuff. That it could go so many different places, but yeah, that's one of my favorite theories. Is that sort of like tragic, uh, tragic demise for him? You know, in a very oh yeah meaningful way. They're not just like oh, we got smacked. I think mm-hmm. it'd be cool, but we'll see. And it could be growth for Cloud. You know, Cloud who's very kind of cold in the first act. It would be cool to see oh, yeah. him uh, kind of like respect Roche in that way. And I, I think he does a little bit already. I think Cloud respects him. Yeah, I I, I think Cloud doesn't know what to think of him. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But speaking of uh, other characters, unless you have another thought, please. I, I was I just I, I remembered a, a, a theory that uh, that I that I saw mm-hmm. that was it ended up being like so like far from it where everyone's like, oh, I wonder like what Roche knows about Cloud. Like, 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 like yeah. does Roche know Cloud's secrets. Dude doesn't even know his name. He doesn't know his name. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was so funny. That like and, uh, threw all of those theories out the window. Like oh, as yeah. soon as it happened, I was like, "Well, <laughs> yeah." In in, uh, in intermission, if you guys haven't don't remember, he's like yelling, but he's just like, "My friend," <laughs> he doesn't he doesn't know his name. <laughs> and and then like like Yuffie comes up and she's just like, "So uh, what's his name?" And he goes, "Oh, I only wish I knew." <laughs> <laughs> so good, heartbroken. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. just so over the top too. Yeah, you you nailed it, man. Again, it was just fun too because in the first part, it's pretty it's a pretty dire circumstance when you run into Roche. Like you know, yeah, it's it's very intense and like there's actual uh, it's 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 pretty threatening. You know, Wedge is in trouble and there's a lot of stuff going on. He kind of rescues us, Roche. Like it's crazy. Yeah, he almost like saves the day. He does. Yeah, <laughs> he saves yeah. the day. And he's like, no, I want to keep fighting Cloud, so he'll survive. But yeah. in, in Yuffie, I talked about this a lot. Like, I love the tone they go for. Like, Yuffie is like an adolescent, you know, young woman who's like kind of living as a very childlike thought process. So the whole yeah. intermission is very childlike. She's literally running around playing like board games with all these people and stuff, you know, having a great time. The music is fun. It's super uh, upbeat, just like her. Like, even the camera oh, work yeah. and stuff is upbeat. Um, she can't see her father's perspective. Like, she, it's a very selfish, childish thing. But then, uh, you know, later she has that growth, like from Sonon's passing and all this, like very, you know, uh, maturing factors. Oh, does Sonon and... die? <laughs> no, I, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it in grade yet. <laughs> well, you have you haven't seen it? I no, I, I I've seen like the end of it, but like I literally like watched like the ending cutscene and like the bits with Roche. I didn't know that Sonon died. Oops. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about the end. <laughs> Yeah, no, I I, oh, I knew no. that she was like alone, but like I I like I it was it was the bit with um 
I started it from the bit where she's like on the chocobo going like that. Oh like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was even wondering like, oh, where's Sonon? <laughs> yeah, he uh, he took a different train in Midgard. Don't worry, he'll be back. He'll be back. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess it has something to do with Sha- with with with, with Shonathan Shiplock. Shonathan <laughs> Shiplock. I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna so, take a wild guess. So wait, before I ask my because I was gonna talk about Chiplock's character and stuff. Do you know anything about what happens with him? About with with, with Nero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that Nero is the final boss of okay. uh, intermission. No, yeah, I don't want to spoil anyone. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that, that much I know. Good stuff. Are you gonna play it yeah. soon? Oh, but you need a PS5. I, I need a issue. PS5. I don't have a PS5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I own. I own FF7 in, in, in Intermission because uh, Square Enix was so kind to give me a copy of it the night that it came out. But um, it's like, can I get me a PS5 Square? I, I'm just like, I'm just like, like, cool. This is gonna be sitting in the cloud until in the cloud. <laughs> okay, uh, yes, <laughs> sitting cloud. in my friend until I get a PS5. Mm, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's wild. But no, I was gonna talk to you about his performance and stuff. Yeah, he, he did a really good. I mean, as, I'm you, you're no stranger to his performances. Um, well, Sean is incredible. Well, I mean, he's he's Doctor Menace and Megaton Girl. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, they've worked together and they have a lot of fun. Oh yeah, but he he's an absolute blast to work with. Like seriously, yeah. Sean and I have been friends since 2000, and oh wait, we've been friends for a decade now. Yeah, 2011. Did mm-hmm. you guys meet through acting, or how did you guys meet up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we met through acting. We uh, actually no, no, I, I met Sean very briefly in 2010, but we've okay. been friends since 2011. I met him. Um, he was the winner of Anime Expo Idol the year before I was a finalist. Wow. Um, and once uh, I That's crazy. made the finals, he started hanging out with me a lot because he's like, dude, I want you to win. <laughs> and, and so he like, he's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to take you up to the hotel room. I'm going to bring you all of the cough drops that you want. And wow. You are not talking for the rest of the day because I really? want your voice to be fresh for when you do it. And I was like, OK. Um, <laughs> and I ended up getting I ended up getting completely like kind of like kind of screwed over because they gave Why? me the most boring script. Everybody else got to really like emote. And I was playing this guy who's it was uh, in a uh, 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 da 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 um in uh that 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 anime and i was i was um i was posting i can't remember his name but he's uh he was like posting uh something ikebukuro idol or lovers or something like that i don't mm-hmm. remember the character's name but i was voicing that character and it was like in such like a scene where it's just like i've oh, got Dead nothing Man? i can do nothing with this character oh that sucks um so i i was kind of I was kind of screwed from the beginning, but yeah, he I wanted Kamina. I was like, I was like, I, I want to do, uh, I want to do Kamina, and they're just like, how about you to play this character? And I was just like, ah, oh, that's thanks. awful. <laughs> hey, it proves that you know, no matter who, how good you are, you can only do so much with the uh, source material, you know. Yeah, because everybody else got to go like big and stuff like that, and I was just like, if you do, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll do the uh, we'll do the giveaway after you guys come back. Ooh. Giveaway coming up soon, guys. Very exciting. Very excited. Give away Pixel Remasters. Get ready. But yeah, it's uh, it, it's all about the material, man. Like you know, you can oh, yeah. you can work wonders with it. But if you have something like that, where it's just like, yeah, holy shit! Thank you so much for the five dollar donation. Have a question to Excellent. Which characters are involved in this sentence from FF Seven R? Think you got my number? No, not at all. You're God, making I, me sweat. I love the bit alerts. <laughs> Thank you. Think you got I my number? That- Thank you so much. If you can, uh, that message, I saw it a little late. Uh, the one that was linked to the donation. If you want to post that in chat again, because I'm not sure Austin saw it as well. Thank no, you so much for that uh, $5, though. Really appreciate it. Also, Morgana Sapphire Raven, hello. Good to see you. Yeah, what's up, Morgana? The picture, I remember that, yeah. Your room behind you there is beautiful. Thank you, Lily. I appreciate that. Yeah, I have the the changing. Oh, guys, there's there's uh, commands, too. If you guys want to change the background color, this light strip right here, you can do that with uh, channel points. If you guys are interested. Oh, snap. Hold up. I'm yeah. going to do that. Yeah, get on it, man. Get on. We got a nice kind of like bright light blue going on right now. Let's see here. Change. Ooh, do do? Austin's going for it first. We'll give him the honorable what, first. Whatever here. color I want. How do I do that? I can't do it. Can I do it on phone? I don't think I can. You should be able to do it on phone. Just tell me what color you want, and it's done. Oh, uh, purple. 
Purple it is. Ready? Here we go. Here we go. Hold up. I'm submitting it. There we go. Oh, <laughs> there, there we go. go. Nice purple. Very good. That would trip me out. Awesome. Oren wants to do it too. Yeah, we'll we'll leave the purple up for a little bit and then we'll uh, we'll cycle through it. But we got to do it for Austin. I mean, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a Roche Play Arts figure. That's awesome. I would love that. I would absolutely adore a Roche Play Arts figure. Yeah, that would be so sick. What would you do? Man? I would empty oh. my bank account for a Roche Play Arts figure. I was gonna say that would be so hyped to have a figure. Um, yeah, from I heard. You think you got my number? That's that's Rufus. That's Rufus's line. If it was like a trivia thing. Um, but thank you again so much for the the donation. Um, Arden, oh Arden is so good. I mean, you know Darren DePaul, obviously Austin. Like he is, uh, he is a oh, fantastic yeah. actor. And Arden is phenomenal. I would have loved to yeah. see the the end not be a book. Yes, <laughs> definitely. I, I saw the book actually. I went to the Barnes and Noble the other day, and I almost picked up the book, but I ended up picking up the um, Final Fantasy Seven. Um, uh, poster book. Instead. Yes, I have that right behind me. Actually, it's so cool. I'm I'm gonna put up all the posters. Actually, I'm it's, gonna I'm, gonna, I'm yeah. gonna get frames for all of them and I'm gonna hang them up. It's got the Advent Children stuff. You're gonna love it. Yeah. I yeah. I, it's it was interesting. I actually have a bigger version. I'm gonna grab it. of one of the Advent Children posters already. Really. Um. So I might end up uh, um, keeping yeah. that one in there. If if you guys haven't seen this, I showed it off on stream a while ago. But it is it it's is incredible. Such a joy. I mean, it's, I think, what, 22? Yeah, 22 removable yeah, 22, posters. Yeah, 22 posters. They're yeah. 14 by 11. Yeah. So I need to find some 14 by 11 picture frames. It's it's really fun. And not only are the posters cool, you can hang them up. But, I mean, it starts off with remake stuff. Like, you know, we got yeah. Sephiroth here. But then it kind of goes back in time. And you get all these memories. Like, if, you, if you're like us, like me and Austin, you grew up with these movies, these games. I mean, you it, go it back from and, remake, I think, into Advent Children next. Yeah. Yeah. If you, you go back and you get like this, which is oh. like the old website image for Advent Children. We were like, holy that was shit. The cover of one of the one of the what the box art, I think, for one of them. Yeah. Yep. It was the box art and everything like it is yeah. just so much fun. And I saw it like on sale. It just popped up on I think my they've Amazon. They've got the box art for the Blu-ray version of it, too. Yep. This would be that, I think. No, not that's that's not it. I think that was um, that was something. I don't know. That was some that was a cover. Oh, I think we have that here. This, I think this might have been the Blu-ray. Com- no, it's the one with Cloud and Sephiroth. They're like going at each other. I think. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that's in here. The too. Advent Complete version, I think. Yeah, oh, there it is. Yeah, this yeah, one. yeah. That, that's the that's the Advent Complete cover. That's the yeah. one that I have currently hanging up um, so, in my living room. So much fun, so much fun. See, I, I recommend you guys. It can't be that expensive. I got it on sale, so I don't know exactly. It's like but- twenty two bucks. Oh, there you go, twenty two bucks. Yeah. A buck per poster. It's pretty damn good. Basically, yeah. But, um, um, I ended up getting that, and I got um, the Adventure Zone book four. Ooh, okay. If y'all have not read or listened to the Adventure Zone, you are missing out. You're missing out. I, yeah. <laughs> I was reading through book four last night. Yeah. And it took me about two hours to get through the whole thing. In that second hour, I cried five times. Five times in an hour. Oh yeah. So uh, and then w- while I was also laughing my ass off pretty consistently too. <laughs> he laughed. Um, it's, he it's, cried. It's, well, it's it's it, the whole thing is it's based off of a D and D campaign. Oh uh, okay. Um, That's and cool. it's phenomenal. Um, and it gets really funny and it gets really emotional. Um, but I I wholly recommend the Adventure Zone. Yeah, that's incredible. Mm-hmm. It's an emotional roller coaster. Yeah, it sounds it. Damn. Yes. Yes, yes, absolutely. Like this, this is the arc where they start hitting like the heart of the series because like the first two arcs are mostly just like you know like just funny. Mm-hmm. The third arc, you have a little bit of that emotion at the end of it, um, and book book three hits that emotion hard. I was crying at the end of that book. Damn, um, sounds great. But the whole second half of oh yes, from Crisis Core. That's great. Yeah, that's great too. Yeah. Mm. Damn, I gotta get into that again. That sounds mm. fantastic. But yeah, this is this is good too, guys. As we as we chat, just showing you some some stuff. Raging Red Wolf likes it, and then we have Dirge of Cerberus. Yes, Riker was excited to see Dirge of Cerberus stuff because he loves Dirge of Cerberus. Awesome. Yeah, I mean Vincent. Everybody likes Vincent. I mean, come on. He's got a huge um, Vincent uh, wall scroll hanging in. He's got we've we've got a side oh, it's it's our guest room but that's currently where he is recovering from a sur- from his surgery. Amazing. Um 
and he got a huge Vincent Wall scroll. It's like the one where it's like really close like up on his yeah. face, and like the fire is behind him. Uh huh. I love that one. It's so tight. So I think I think I asked you this last time, but I may not have. It's been it's been so long. Who is your favorite? You know, Roche aside, who is your favorite character? Would you say in Final Fantasy VII? Barrett. Ah, oh, good choice. Yeah. Absolutely, Barrett. Yeah, I love Barrett. Like, I'm I'm glad that we um I actually got that poster because I'm finally gonna have a picture of Barrett up in up in my house because I've Hell yeah. like I've wanted a, a poster of Barrett. And I haven't I haven't found any, and I'm just like, there's one. I'm going to put that up where I can see it at all times. Yes, I love Barrett. He so, he's just yeah. especially in the remake. Barrett is phenomenal. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and like we, you know, who else's favorite character Barrett is? No more. Really? That's what he said. Yeah, and you can tell. Oh, you can tell in the remake. Like he gets all these tell. like speeches and stuff. Like at the end of the game, if you saw this scene like out of context, you know, when they walk into the portal, like to follow Sephiroth and stuff. Like, yes. He gets. You would think that Barrett's the main character, like not Cloud. He gets this amazing yeah. speech and everything. It's so. Well, he's it's the him. leader of Avalanche. There's no Avalanche without Barrett. Yeah, exactly. And it's like yeah. him alone. He's the last guy to go in. He gives this big speech about Marlene. It's, it's so good. The main For theme a good of Final Fantasy Final plays. Fantasy VII, he's the main character. For like the good half of the game, he's the main character. Yeah, absolutely. So. Yeah. Yeah, we're, what I'm saying is we're in for a treat in the other parts because you know he he loves him so much. It's you can tell like there's a lot of care put into him. Oh and yeah. Something I said is you know in the original games, just not enough time to like focus on all the characters. Like Barrett after his flashback story, like he's just not in it as much. He doesn't do as much because we got his whole story resolution. So something that's gonna be great with you know Barrett is we're gonna get a lot more of his kind of like character and Marlene's a big part of that, right? Like what better way to link back to everything? So. That's going to be really fun. Oh, I think we lost Austin for a second. You get to see two of me. Hello, I have a comb. Do you like combs? Um, I also have a dead camera battery, if you guys like that. Yeah, what a perfect that was time. Me, that was me. Oh, okay. He's back. Oh, my camera. Let me, oh, there we go. Uh, camera on. He's back. There he is, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. I was just showing him the cool stuff in the comb. <laughs> It's yeah, Aaliyah's comb, all right? I love that book. I admit it. But um, guys, I think this is a perfect time to do the giveaway. So, yes. If you guys weren't giveaway. here last night, oh. we're going to be giving away a copy of Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster. Is, are they, is it, we didn't do FA3 again, or is the first one there? Do you know? Yeah, we're going to check which one to give away. They actually ran out of codes for FF1. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It's a good sign for Wow. Uh, for FF1. So, guys, how this is going to work is... Oh, wait, we can get it. We can get FF1? Yeah. Hell yeah. We're going to give FF1 everybody's favorite, the start of the franchise. Let me just get into Streamlabs here. So, guys, how it's going to work is there will be a minute, and I'm going to start the hype music in just a second. There will be one minute to enter this giveaway. All right, so make sure you're in chat. All you have to do is be a follower. All right, that's the only... Yeah, that's the only thing you got to do. Um, I'm good for one second, but Aaliyah has joined us. I'll move over. She's got ah, just Mog with us. Aaliyah. It's going to be great. I am, uh, there we go. I'm going <laughs> to switch the screen just for one second from Austin here. Ready for action. All right, guys. Let's see. The giveaway has begun. Get in there. You got 50 seconds to do exclamation point oh, pixel. Snap. You must follow. To enter this giveaway, let's oh get hype, everybody! I see a lot of people getting the chance. Let's go! Get in there, you guys! You got 40 seconds. 40 seconds to enter! Exclamation point! Pixel, who's gonna take it? Who's gonna take it? Get in there, guys! Oh, I see a lot of people entering. Very good. All you have to do is follow if you are new to enter, and then exclamation point! Pixel, who's gonna take it today? I'm being attacked by Mark. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> 19 seconds. This is so exciting, Devil Reapers. Who will take the Pixel Remaster today? Mog has the winner. <laughs> Mog will pick the winner. You got eight seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, three two, two, one. one. <laughs> and that is it. Your time has expired, and your life will expire thereafter. Okay, pick the winner. The winner is. Who Hoo hoo boo boo has won the giveaway! 
This is I was gonna say that Hoo Hoo Boo Hoo Boo has a fantastic username and then they ended up winning. <laughs> yes, they really do. They really do. Hell yeah, Hoo Hoo Boo Hoo. So, <laughs> what's gonna happen is, let's switch back to the interview setup here. Aaliyah is going to message you a whisper on Twitch and then she will take it from there. Thank you so much, guys. If you lost, you must type in hashtag rigged in the chat. It's tradition. <laughs> <laughs> it is rigged. But thank you guys so much for playing. Uh, we will be doing more giveaways. Yeah, thank you, Spencer. Thank you. He was trying to win. I could smell it on him. He wanted that, pic <laughs> he wanted that pixel remaster <laughs> really bad. Hashtag didn't enter because I'm Austin. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Who rigged it? It was Mog. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Take me, not Mog. Take me. It was me. Wow, that was so cool. <laughs> was I. Awesome. Rigder Mortis, yes. All right. <laughs> Rigder Mortis. That is the first I saw that. That's, That's funny. funny. So with us, uh, with that, we're back to our talk with us. But yeah, thank you guys. We'll be doing more giveaways, so make sure to stick around and follow. Can I get you anything? It's free. Um, oh, my God. So cool. uh, what? Brando has gifted five tier one subs to the community. Tiger Stripes, Jasmineta. Oren Muramasa, John Ron, and Stefan. Let's get some cowards die first in the chat, everybody. Enjoy the ad-free viewing and the emotes, my friends. Thank you so much. That is so kind of you, man. And you can hear the voice of Erica Lindbeck welcoming you in as Jesse. Okay, I'm going to... Yes. Sorry. Thanks, you hit the mic. It's okay. I'm good. Thank you. Do you have any questions for Austin? Um, how did you get so cool? How did you get so fly? <laughs> um, uh, I surround myself with wonderful people who inspire me to be better. I know that's right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like Good seriously, answer. like that—that's the answer. Is I surround myself with good people. I love that answer. Aww. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Right. Austin is awesome. Yeah, cool. I'm good. Uh, I will take your comb. Oh my god, Oren Muramasa is gifting there five tier one subs to Devil Reaper Savior Amtrex. He got it. Yes, he I got it. This. All right, let's get some cowards divers in the chat, everybody. Thank you so much. And hell yeah, hooking up Austin with the sub. Guys, there enjoy the go. ad free viewing and the crazy emotes. There we go. Phil and Mega Ten Girl together at last. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. You're amazing. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, for the generosity. Um, you know, we love having Austin on. So thank you for, like, you know, showing open for us tonight, guys. It's always, it's always awesome. Uh, who do you want to see in part two of Remake? Who do I want to see, Morgana? Oh, man. I really would love to see uh, Vincent. I, I don't know. I think we might end on Vincent uh, in part two. It might be like his reveal when we get there to Nibelheim. I think that'd be really cool. We could also, that would uh, be interesting. Yeah, we could also meet him later and stuff. I had an idea the other day. I was like, man, it'd be kind of cool if Vincent could be the final boss of part two. It'd be crazy. Oh, my God. Spencer is gifting us up as well. We got a hype train. To Hi, Merle friend. Baggins of Baggin. I hope for Cisnate, that would be sick. Yeah, everybody answer this in chat. Who do you want to see? But picture this. You get to uh, you get to Nibelheim, and you end up uh, finding Vincent, but you know he's like kind of half asleep, or he's upset. You wake him up to uh, forcefully. It could be kind of like a horror vibe, like Nero. How they did for Nero. If, if you haven't seen it, Austin, I won't spoil it, but it's freaking terrifying. <laughs> oh, I bet. Thank you so much, Oren. Yeah, Sean Chiplock is terrifying in that thing. You're like, oh, this is awesome. It's Yuffie. It's fun. Then you're like, I want to go home. This shit's scary. <laughs> I need an adult. You know? So, um, and the stuff he's saying, too, like, it's wild. He's just like, it hurts, brother. It hurts. And it's wild. But um, that anyway. rules. Yeah, and he's just great at that sort of thing. But yeah, uh, I would love to see Vincent. Maybe you wake him up or something, and you, he's he just doesn't know who you are. He thinks you're an enemy, and there's this crazy boss fight, because like, it would showcase... Like, what better way to introduce Vincent? It would showcase all of his, his transformations and his powers and stuff and chaos. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, that could be pretty sick. So we'll see. Yeah. But that's a theory I had the other day. I was like, hey, there's no boss if it ends at Nibelheim. But wait a second. There you go. Gilgamesh. The only, the, the only boss I can think of at Nibelheim is the secret boss that you get to find Vincent. <laughs> that's yes. It. Yes. I mean, lost number. Oh, yeah, lost number. Exactly. Yeah, lost number. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mistake of waking Vincent without bringing an offering of coffee. <laughs> that would be funny. <laughs> that would be really funny. Yeah, there's a lot of options, but I would love to see him, of course. Um, and let me think about this. I mean, for me, a lot of the what made the world so magical is a lot of those like smaller characters. 
Think about like Dio from the Gold Saucer and stuff, who I always thought has like Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice, you know? How funny <laughs> is that going to be? Like all these just larger than life characters who are hilarious. Um, I love Dio. Yeah. Like he's walking yeah. around just like flexing constantly and stuff. Like, hello, Cloud. <laughs> you look good today. And so it's like, it's what? It's me. Yeah. Hello. Oh my God. Spencer has gifted the sub to Noonwood. That's crazy. Thank you so much, Spencer. No problem. <laughs> Level four hype train. He's right here. <laughs> Holy crap. Level four hype train too. Dine, yeah, Dine is gonna be great. I, I really hope they uh they nail Dine because holy shit, that Barrett backstory is gonna I was telling Ali like she loves Barrett, but she's only seen part one. Like, oh man, the Barrett backstory is so good. It is so damn good. There we go. Build that hype. <laughs> yeah. Build that hype. It's gonna be awesome, but yeah, guys, I, let's do this too, since we got the giveaway out and we're just chilling kind of Open up chat to questions, man. Let us know anything you want to ask Austin or myself or both of us. We're having a good time. We can talk about more theories. I had just written down, you know, look at chat. But um, because Austin hasn't played Intermission, I don't want to spoil every uh, thing for him. You I've only he... seen like the first half of Intermission. Okay. You said something like, oh my God. Brando, we've been visited by the Goron. Holy Ooh. shit. 1,000 bits. Thank you so much, 11 Brando. <laughs> <laughs> We've been we blessed by the Goron. Too. Wow. I'm going to get the Master Sword. Hold on. <laughs> Holy crap. Thanks for the bit. That's another fucking bit. Oh, my God. I've pulled the freaking Master Sword. Here we go. And Aaliyah has gifted a sub to Spencer Shaolin. Holy shit. This is very meta right now. This is very meta. <laughs> You're getting live uh, announcements of what's happening in front of you. I love it. Um, this is a good question from Orange. How do you deal with fear or people's opinions about your work? That's a great question, especially for actors. Yeah. Um, I generally, unless it really doesn't bother me that much. Like, unless it's somebody like who I like, you know, I, I know, like, like I, 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 I enjoy like the fan reactions and all of that. But as far as like 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 a crit like criticisms and stuff like that, like unless it's like somebody that I know, it, I'm probably like not gonna see it. Yeah. Because I'm just like, oh, okay. It's yes. like you know, I, I I I take criticism from people who know what they're talking about. Yeah, I was just gonna say um, that. Yeah. Because if they don't if they don't know what they're talking about, because there's a lot of people who like very clearly don't know what they're talking about. They will just say yes. something that is just like wrong. Yeah. I'm just like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm it's I, I agree completely, and <laughs> you guys know I come from the martial arts uh community and it is the most toxic ridiculous like idiotic place on earth as i always joke if you think the fighting game community is bad imagine real fighting and how like insecure people get <laughs> and stuff. like imagine that yeah so um yeah you gotta you gotta take it with a with a grain of salt when you have like lunatics you know i oh, yes you actually know nothing i'm charlie and i could defeat you myself it's like who is this <laughs> random person but he's never trained in their life like you can only take it so serious and you gotta just kind of laugh at it for the most part oh, yeah. but uh yeah, same with acting. Like, who are these people? Like, they've probably never taken an acting course, much less uh, could critique yeah. Austin's work, you know, with the... Uh... I, I, like, stopped letting it bother me after a while. Like, it was one of those things I'm just like, oh, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. And also, you got to be... Yeah. You got to you gotta really focus on your work, you know? And yeah. you, you'll see... I, I... Like, you'll want to improve your own stuff. Like, if you watch it back and, you know, you hear yourself, you'll be like, oh, okay, I can improve that next time. But, like... Oh, yeah. You know, and you, you'll want to take it, like, actor. from... Like, yeah, you know. like when I did my voice reel and Austin gave me advice, I was like, okay, I'm going to work on that. It wasn't like, you know, yeah, if you, you, if you get, with it. yeah, you got to listen to experts. Like, so Austin knows yeah. what he's doing. I listen to him. I'm not going to listen to, you know, Instagram user, you know, whatever, like ass licker 69 or like, you know, it's not, a, <laughs> it's, it's not. And gonna... my mother and my fiance like me and that's what matters. So you know, exactly, whatever. exactly. That's what matters. <laughs> Sure. But that, that that's a that's a Dan Avidan quote that's that stuck with me for a while. It's like, eh, my mom likes me, so who gives a shit? That's very <laughs> profound. That's very profound. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you, Leah. Um. Yeah. I'm actually. I, do you want me to say this? Can I say that? Okay. So I've been pushing Leah to record a voice reel herself. So we're gonna do that one of these days. Ooh. And uh, because she has number one, she has a lot of accents, like mastered. Because like she just kind of has the accent, and her family has the accent, so that's super easy for her. As well as uh, she can do like this crazy high pitched. Like, do you want to showcase or no? I don't want to play. Do you have a background in acting, too, Aaliyah? He's, he's asked, do you have a background in acting? Um, a little bit. 
A little bit, she says, yes. A little bit, okay. Better you, than none. Yeah, you should do that if you feel comfortable with the high pitch. Oh my God, I'm gonna I don't know how microphone. to... Very good. Destroy the mic, yeah. Impress me. She... <laughs> you should, you should. But yeah, she does this like high pitch. She'll be singing like normally and then does this... You call it a whistle tone, right? Does like this whistle tone with her voice, and it's like, what the hell is what that? It's just like it's incredibly high. It's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, we but... have Reapers has a question. It was which character was more difficult for me to get into, Ash Carbide or Roche? Ooh, Ash Carbide, probably because Ash Carbide is so like he's got like twelve layers to him at any given moment. Awesome, yeah. Um, yeah, like holy crap like some scenes with ash like i was ripping my throat out as much as i was ripping my heart out <laughs> dang dang yeah that that yeah. makes sense that makes oh yeah have a good night shauna thanks for being here and yes ash overtone is the word that we're looking for apparently um for the the whistle sound oh overtone they oh, say uh, that's the word what is that if that's if that's true uh, mr lane is saying it's called overtone the the thing that you do yes oh. Who would have thought? Yeah, but it's, it's wild. You guys will hear it one day. We don't want to put her on the spot, though. You know? uh, who's a better protagonist, Nyx or Noctis? Whispers. The correct answer is Nyx. I mean, that's a Noctis should be better. You know, he has more time and everything, but Nyx is cool. I mean, you got to look at it. It's, it's two different. Uh, it's the guy from the movie, uh, Kingsglaive, the main character. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Played yeah, yeah, yeah. by, uh, what's his name? The guy from Breaking Bad. Yes. Uh, Aaron, uh, what's it? Aaron Paul. Aaron DePaul. But uh, he is, um, it's two different mediums, right? It's film and video games. So it's kind of hard to compare. But I would say yeah. uh, Noctis, if Versus 13, like kind of full story was told, would be like the definitive better answer. I, I still think he is personally. But Nyx was fun. Yeah, for what it was, it was a like crazy kind of like action-packed setup movie for a game. So like it's, it's, it serves a different function than a normal film. You got to look at mm -hmm. it like that, right? So. What's happening, Sigma Squad? As we, Ali D says. What's up, Ali? How you doing? Uh, huge fan of Gladio. Yeah, Gladio is awesome. Gladio is so much fun. I should cosplay him. Oh. Yeah, I should do it. Oh yeah. That'd be fun. Oh, that'd be cool. We got a good question from Dan uh, Austin. If you see that one. Oh yeah, we we kind of answered that one a bit earlier. Oh yeah, yeah. we did. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Evolution. Of the four friends in FF15, who do you see as yourself? Ooh, that's good. That's good. Prompto for me. Prompto, yes. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I love Prompto. For the same reasons that I like Roxas. Like, yeah. Doesn't like doesn't really know who he is and and slowly finds out who he is. And it's just like, oh. Totally. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Prompto's great. Yeah, they're all great. It was funny because we, uh, you got the hair for Gladio. Thank you, Alchemist. I appreciate it. Um, I'm working on it, but uh, me, this is a funny story, Austin, you'll appreciate. So Spencer, me, Spencer, Frank, and Alex, or my, my friends, we lived in the room, we called it. And okay. uh, it sounds like some insane social experiment, but we lived in a studio apartment. <laughs> and uh, we, <laughs> we it, it was a room, like there was a bathroom that had a door, and it was just a studio apartment with four young men. Who were just like working oh, out and like grunting and, and stuff all day. It was like a testosterone overload, like 24-7. And we this is in 2016 when FF15 comes out. Uh -huh. And uh, we started playing it and everything. And it was so funny because we had the conversation, which we all have had, of like, oh, who's who? Because there's four guys and there's four guys in the game. <laughs> it's so <laughs> funny because at the end of the day, like not all of us, but some of us fit like exactly. And it was actually fairly easy to put everybody right into the mold of where they belong. So... It was mm -hmm. really funny, especially uh, Frank. If you guys have ever seen Frank from my old YouTube videos, he has like no neck. He's a Marine officer, also a Wall Street, like, you know, I don't even know what the term is. Investment banker, I guess, is the proper term. Oh, good Lord. Wow. But he's just like the <laughs> ultimate kind of like he doesn't. Toxic masculinity. <laughs> Spencer, Spencer says toxic masculinity. I, w I wouldn't say so. But yeah, he's he's a great guy, but he's just like super extreme. But yeah, he uh, he has no neck essentially. His traps are so big, and he <laughs> oh wow, yeah. Spencer jokes that he has like a, he's an action figure from the '80s, but he only has like two posable points. Just like his his like upper body isn't one of them. <laughs> so he just kind of like moves as a unit. Yeah. 
But um, your favorite movie, The Room? Yeah, it was better than The Room. Oh yes, with Tommy Wiseau. Ha ha ha. Yeah. No, it's <laughs> it's crazy. There's a good question from Alia. The most difficult role? Oh. As far as acting, probably Ash. And mm. as far as like physically, um, like because like Ash, I talked about because he's got like the layers to him. Um, but he was he was easy vocally, difficult emotionally. Mm. Um, but as far as like characters that have been like physically difficult for me to play, yeah. um, I don't know if you saw the pilot of Megaton Girl, but there's a character yes. named Thaddeus Sludge. <laughs> um, yeah. And I voice him. And he's a big, you know, poop monster. Um, <laughs> and that character, because he, like, he gets big. He, like, he roars. He has, like, this big, like, <laughs> he, like, he has, like, those big roars. Yes. And at, at one point, I, when I was recording his roars, and I, it's it's actually it's recorded and it's in the blooper reel. I oh. almost threw up mid take <laughs> What? because the like, I summoned it from like deep down because it because it's like a like like the the sound that I make for Thaddeus is. Um, <laughs> have you ever seen the anime like the original Animaniacs? Yes, love Animaniacs. So, so yeah. Maurice Lamarche does this disgusting burp noise that goes. <laughs> <laughs> That noise. <laughs> and that's how I get the Thaddeus. Because when he roars, he goes. <laughs> he does that. And it's just this grotesque vomiting noise. And I, I went too deep with it and actually almost made myself throw up. Oh, um, that's so that is the most difficult character I've ever played. And I oh, thankfully uh, I have gotten to record more Thaddeus since um, for, a, for the D&D session that we did. Um, and I didn't make myself throw up this time. <laughs> that's that's wild, man. Yeah, that makes sense. That's yeah, because yeah, we talked about this last time. I asked Austin like a year ago. You know, a lot of these roles are very physical. Like oh, Roche is such a physical person. Like, how physical do you get in the booth? And there's a lot of body language oh, yeah. that goes into this stuff too. You know, as far as like physical characters, like I've been actually getting like really super physical lately with some characters. Yeah. Um, believe it or not, I got. Uh, for those of you who know. Um, it, it isn't out yet, but it's. We've, we, I can talk about it. The character that I got the most physical with recently was um, Fire Spirit Cookie from Cookie Run Kingdom. Fire um, Spirit Cookie. Yeah, he's Fire he's Spirit this, Cookie. <laughs> yeah, he's he's like he's like this guy. He talks like this. Mm -hmm. He's just like, oh yeah, how's it going? I'm Fire Spirit Cookie. Like he talks like that, but he gets like so like intense. I was like, I was like getting like 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 feel, like super physical with that character, and I'm really excited for people to like to see that character because like, I know that people are nuts about cookie run. Um, That's awesome. And that, that, that whole session was amazing too. Like, Oh yeah. It was a lot of fun. That sounds like a blast. Yeah. I was going to oh, say yeah. the, uh, the Australian bird too. That sounds like it could be getting kind of physical because it's such a fun voice. Actually, Alejandro, the thing about Alejandro is that while he's like really big, I didn't get super like, like, um, physical with him. Like there were occasionally like times where I'd get like really big, but a lot of the time with Alejandro, I have to do this thing where I put my hand, like one hand in front of the other and like put it like in front of my tummy like that. And so I'm like, I don't know, like, I don't know, bio, like, what do you think about that? Like, um, because even though he's like super big, he's like, oh, he's got like this, like, like, you know, like, 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 you know, like, oh, whatever, dude, like, it's whatever, like, I'm fine. <laughs> he's like, he's dumb, dumb as nails. Um, it's awesome. And, but he's, uh, he's like me. He's just <laughs> like, he's, just, yeah, he's. He is he is dumb as, as nails and thick as a rock. Um but like the whole time like, I'm just like I'm doing this, like oh you know, I don't know about that bio, but you know. Um That's like great. the only time that I the only time that I ever got big with Alejandro is that occasionally like if the characters would like have like they'd we'd have like arguments where like they'd just be like, Okay, improvise an argument and I'm gonna turn down my volume a little bit. Where like you know, like they they'd have everybody be like like, well, this is why I'm angry. Like they like they like like go through like this thing and like talk about it, and then they'd be like, okay, so we got uh, Bio, do your thing, and Dina would like do his thing. Uh, Ra uh, uh, Nola, do your thing. Ryan would do her thing, and they go through, 
and they'd get to they get to me and uh tony would say all right austin go and i go i don't know why we're yelling but i want to yell i want to be included hello and i would like <laughs> like i do like this thing where i, I would do that i get like really like up, like up on it like that yeah and every time that we would do that I would see Tony fall back in his seat laughing with his hand <laughs> off of the like the talk button. Yeah, and then fine. he would finally go, press the talk button and go, moving on, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, anyway. Oh, that's funny. That's fun. Yeah. Great stuff. Yeah, we should do. Oh, yeah, speaking of that, so I had Sean Chiplock when he came on as Nero. Um, and we, we can do this with you if you please. It was hilarious. Like, because I want to add sound alerts so that we can activate, like as I'm getting my ass beat in a game or something, uh -huh. trash talking. So we had Nero like trash talk me and something. It was really funny. So uh, I would ask you too, Austin, how do you think Roche would trash talk me if uh, I was I was to come up against him in a fight or something? What would he say? You can't possibly keep up. Just give up now, okay? That was really good. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. actually, you know what? I got one. <laughs> No. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I love that line in, in Intergrade when he goes, <laughs> nice try, but no. Yeah. <laughs> so good. It's so good, man. That was great. Yeah, totally. Because we actually use your, uh, I'm sure you picked up on it by now. We use, I've loaded it for the interview so it doesn't like annoy you the entire time we're talking. But we have the uh, your follow alert every time someone yes. follows on the channel. Yeah, welcome to the philosophers. So. Welcome to the philosophers. <laughs> exactly. Um, we answered uh, phosphorus. We answered that earlier. Uh, voice character for FF six, um, and I said uh, Kefka. Yes. Give us some Kefka laughs in the chat, everybody. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. Hell yeah. Both sound right. Yeah. It's it's a lot of fun. So we're gonna add sound alerts soon, guys, for the trash talking and stuff. That Always rules. fun. Always fun, but uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wrap in a few minutes. If you guys have any last questions, get them in. Yes, them I will in. answer whatever you want. Yes, indeed. I will take questions about any character. I will take questions about Megaton Girl. I will take questions about art. I will take questions even just about anything. Yes, I'm here, and I'm here for you. <laughs> 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 yeah, the Kefka laugh is. He sounds like the the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. That's, cool. I, That's I, cool. I there's a um, there's a remix. Well, not a remix. It's a cover of Dancing Mad by Game Metal. Mm -hmm. Um, and the in the original version of it, I always loved how like when it repeats from the uh, the ba -da 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 into the um the boom ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum when it goes back into yeah, that. Yeah, it's so uh, good. At, at the reprise of of that part of it, um. As soon as the drums start, you hear whoop, 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 yep. and it makes me laugh every time. I love it. It's so good, man. It's so good. And that's why I always wonder because that's the only thing you hear for Kefka, like what yeah. his voice is when he's talking. And uh, we played FF6 recently uh, with Crystal, and I did a, uh, I, I don't know, I took it a lot of different ways. I was kind of having fun with it because when we read the lines, because it's uh, like, is he always like this big crazy or is he kind of like angry like uh, is he lower and stuff so you could take the yeah. actual character in so many different directions like in Dissidia, he's crazy like he's all over the damn place like insane psychopath type voice and uh oh yeah and he messes with the fourth wall and all that stuff yeah 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 <laughs> get my good side <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> he's he's all over the place but i'd be really curious what they do kind of like that in um cyber dimension neptunia I've seen it on your reel. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, yeah, he, he's he's so much fun. Like he's 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 got that same kind of like I don't give a shit, but then also like secretly gives a shit kind of a vibe. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that's Let me awesome. See, let me look here. Um, what would I want for Vincent? Either game. Well, I'm with Vincent. I'm more interested in the gameplay because I already know what we're gonna get with the story. Because it's probably just gonna be the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, we're probably just gonna get the same story beats, but like you know, different but new. I should say. Mm -hmm. Um, but I just I just want to see how these transformations work, dude. Totally. Like I think that would be cool as hell. Yeah, it's gonna be sick to see how they do it. Oh, uh, Dan Clam, seventeen ninety six. I love the way you conveyed that. I'm always up for some Fort Condor. So. When we when we um, when we were recording that, I had I was referencing the Japanese uh, dialogue, 
and they played that for me. And the line says, I'm always up for some Fort Condor. And so the director says, all right, let's listen to the line. Um, and, you know, like, like hear how it sounds in Japanese and you go for it. I'm like, okay. And he presses play and it's just, Kondo Fort! <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. And I was That's just awesome. like, all right, I guess we're just going for whatever then. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I was going to say, because like how, how, and if you can answer this, I don't know. Like how particular are they with you matching the Japanese and how much freedom do they, because I know in FF10, it was like, you need to sound exactly like the voice. That's so long ago though, in FF10. Um, they, they gave me a lot of liberty. I, I, actually with the Japanese, a lot of, a lot of it, we would like, we would pull some of it back a bit actually mm -hmm. to make it sound more, natural right right um as natural as roche can sound yeah <laughs> um because he's always he's always on um yeah. but like a lot of the time because like, like, there's stuff like when you're when you're dubbing there's stuff that works in japanese that just doesn't work it, it, for an english audience right an american audience i should say um i apologize hold up i'm gonna turn down my microphone so i can okay hopefully nobody heard any of that um, <laughs> i didn't i didn't yeah, I just burped and it was disgusting. Um, <laughs> what was I talking about? Wow. You were talking about uh, how you uh, reference the Japanese for lines. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so we would act, we, uh, sometimes we would dial it back and sometimes we would, we would match it. But like uh, I, I really overall, I got to make Roche kind of my own sort of thing. Like, yes, it's inspired by the Japanese. Um, yeah. The, uh, oh, my gosh, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, 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 I don't know off the top of my night. head. Um, Kenta Miyake. Mm -hmm. um, he's just, he, he's one of my favorite, just like Japanese actors in general. So yeah, getting to work off of him was fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. But like, it's, it's based slightly on him, a little bit of my own vibe that I give to him, and a little bit of Oogie Boogie. Love um, that. So that's, you know, yeah. Now, you, uh, you said last time you were on that you actually kind of contributed this uh this type of effect to the laugh that he does and like his like, oh yeah because yeah. like they, they they said they, like they they didn't tell me to like match the laugh in japanese yeah they just said you know just like do whatever you like do whatever just make it like like a big big wild laugh mm -hmm. and i'm just like i can do the grito i'm gonna do the grito mm -hmm. um and so like because I, i'm because i was listening to it he, do, he does the <laughs> <laughs> you're like he does that yep and um i'm just like you know what i can translate that i just went <laughs> so you know it's just all a matter of like translating you know even that <laughs> into, into like uh, you know um but you know I, I didn't have to do that i just wanted to like you know yeah no that was awesome and they used it i love that they let you have that uh that freedom though. that's awesome and somebody mm -hmm. said really early in this chat like when we were first starting like i can't believe this is Roche's voice. Like you sound so different, and uh, that's just you know, uh, Thank you. Uh, shows how much range he has. You know? He's not that far off from my natural voice because I think Roche is just right in here. Like my name is Roche. Like, um, mm -hmm. like he's not that far off from me. Like I've played some characters who are pretty far off from my natural voice. Yeah. Um, but all things considered, Roche is. If we had, if I had like grade characters who are like way off from my natural voice, mm -hmm. a one is Ash Carbide, a ten is Thaddeus Sludge, and <laughs> Roche is maybe like a two or a three. Yeah, like he's not that far off. That um, makes sense. But he's definitely more Buck Wild than I am. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Would you? You know, I just thought of something too for the channel. Everybody's asking for a poop monster one, but would you? I don't know if you can do this. Would you be able to say our channel slogan as Roche so we can use that and promote a? Megaton what's, the channel, what's the channel slogan? It's cowards die first. <laughs> cowards die first. Nah, that's great. That's great. Um, yeah. th th I have a shirt that is very similar to that. It is Sephiroth and Cloud. They're facing in opposite directions. Mm -hmm. And it says soldier first class. The brave do not fear the grave. Oh, that's awesome. That's it's so cool. No, that's sick because that's, uh, that's what the floor says in the, uh, the gold saucer battle arena. Mm -hmm. The brave do yeah. not fear the girl. Oh, it's so sick. Can That's I do sick. an Ash voice line? Um, oh snap! What's an Ash voice line? Um, uh, hold up! I gotta do the. <laughs> I gotta get physical for Ash. Because he, he he points the gun at the guy and he goes, 
Hey, tell me, who do I got to kill to get rid of all this pain? Yeah, that's Ash. Wow, that's great. Yeah, that that sounds that seems like a uh, not a stretch, but that seems very far from your uh, normal voice. Yeah, your yeah, that's not like he he gets he gets there, but like he he's normally like pretty close to me. That's awesome. Um, Love that. See here, imagine the poop roar happening right when <laughs> he just goes. <laughs> 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 that's <laughs> great. <as> hell. <laughs> that's great. Oh my god. <laughs> Austin, what is my next future project that I'm going to work on? Um, Megaton Girl, episode five, coming soon. That's my. That's from Ron, yeah. Ron, and, Ron, Ron Mailer One, I believe. Yeah, and stay tuned for that because uh, the best way, and you can, you know, of course, let us know, Austin. Like, I think the best ways to find Austin are mostly Twitter and Twitch, also YouTube, right? Oh, TikTok yeah. now as well. I'm on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I'm I'm on Twitter at the same at that I'm at on here, just like. I'm gonna put sup. That's the, that's you know, I'm I'm same thing. Amtrak's VA on Twitter. Yeah. Um. On on TikTok, I am no go away. Uh, I am Austin Lee Matthews, just at Austin Lee Matthews, all one word. Yeah. It, his TikTok's uh, a lot of fun too. That's why I was like, you gotta get on, dude, because it's just you can be insane on TikTok. You can just have fun with it. I I, I did a duet last night where it was some it was like i don't remember like the filter i want to say it's called chase me yep and it's this guy and he's doing the avengers and it zooms in on his face mm -hmm. and he goes assemble and then he, like he, like he just like charges and like zooms out and then, like there's like these like condors chasing him and i did that and i i came in as as thor doing the Bruh! like that yeah <laughs> that's great yeah that's great that's awesome yeah you gotta, you gotta be careful. He he can't say like you know rude, uh, offensive stuff as Roche. You know he can't. Uh, so Al, I don't know if he's gonna say. Oh, we're, we're 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 people asking me to say D's nuts as Roche. Yeah, yeah, you know we gotta. Yeah, no, it's I I can't I can't say D's nuts, but um I can I can say that um I I heard something recently um on uh on grab on about that i don't remember what it was oh man um it was something about that on yeah this is where i saw it um yeah it was definitely on grab on yeah got it very good nobody nobody really nobody. oh is it i didn't catch it what's it what's the reference to uh, come on so, so, somebody in the chat asks just ask the question Ask the question. I'm begging. Should I ask it? What's question. what's grab on? <laughs> grab on these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> he, he was too. He was too ready to do it. I had to. <laughs> I'm just like, please God, somebody. <laughs> That's like the classic. Like, uh, got any up Grab dog? on. Yeah. Grab on is a personal favorite. That and Hanganda. <laughs> Let's hang on to. <laughs> hang on to these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just laughing at my own a, my own quote a, in the chat. There's there's a video <laughs> where where it's 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 um it's Doctor Manhattan talking to Rorschach. Yeah. And um, <laughs> Doctor Manhattan goes, "It's so sad that Steve Jobs died of ligma." And Rorschach goes, who's Steve Jobs? And he goes, Ligma Balls, and blows him up. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, it's too much. That's too much. Yeah, I uh, I said a while ago, I'm waiting till like, the quotes list gets to some milestone. I'm going to do a dramatic reading of all the quotes. As you can see, quote number 90 is a pretty colorful one, but I... Uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do a dramatic. Re Aaliyah was saying I should like get in front of a fireplace with like a glass of wine and like a robe, yeah. be like being fed grapes or something. You know, very very sophisticated. With the shirt just slightly unbuttoned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> It'll be so funny, but oh, you guys kill me. I'm gonna go work out, have fun choking Mickey. <laughs> yeah. There's some wild ones in there. Oh my gosh. But yeah, listen, we're gonna we're gonna wrap up again in a second. Uh, it's funny that you said cowards die first too, because uh, Chiplock 
I was like, oh, what would what would Nero think of the slogan or something like that? And he was like, oh, he's so mean. He said it like in Nero's voice. Oh, I like, saw that. Yes. Did you say he's like cowards die last? And he like, I'm gonna keep you alive. It's like it was hilarious. So we could uh, could have like a dialogue or something. You gotta bury your face. Yeah, um, the bot has has seen too much. But yeah, let's uh, let's wrap up in a second, guys. You know, we gotta thank Austin yet again for coming on. You're always welcome on the show, my friend. And can't thank you enough for the voice, real help, and everything else. Uh, you know, we love having Absolute you on. Absolute blast. Yeah, and feel free to you know what's the best way to find you. What should we look forward to from you? Obviously, Megaton Girl. But you know, feel free yeah. to plug anything, man. Um, yeah, I'm on Twitter at Amtrax VA. Same thing I'm on here. Uh, TikTok, um, mm-hmm. Tumblr. I'm just Amtrax on there, but I don't really use Tumblr that much anymore. Um, mm-hmm. At Megaton Girl is another good place to find because I I post about that all the time on there. Um, that's where I post a lot of Megaton Girl art and updates for the show, and you know I do fun fun stuff there. I do I do daily Q and A's on on my main place, and I occasionally do Q and A's there. Hell yeah! Character Q and A's on the Megaton Girl channel. Awesome. Yeah, I was gonna say he does Q and A's all the time on your on your normal Twitter. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Hell yeah. And then check out Megaton Girl on iTunes, Spotify, Podchaser, Audible. And we're working on YouTube versions of episodes two through four. We, the YouTube version of episode one is up, um, but we are currently working on improving the visuals for uh, future episodes. Um, Hell yeah. You'll be able to find that there. If, if you are uh, hard of hearing or you have auditory processing issues, those are going to be a good place to find that there. Amazing. Yeah. And we, we chatted about this a little bit in private. Like there's some, there's some cool stuff coming with that guy. So look forward to it. And if you haven't, if you don't even know what Megaton girl is, please give it a listen. The pilot's fantastic. Episode one is fantastic. Just, just get in there and uh, be yeah, as always, dude, it's a pleasure and uh, happy. We could present you with some fun art, some fun fan yeah, art. I was, that was so cool. I was like immediately just like save oh. put in the Megaton <laughs> girl folder. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and guys, yeah, definitely check out Aaliyah's art as well. Um, she's awesome and she streams, uh, but her main thing is Instagram, uh, the Aaliyah will Instagram, AKA the fictionary as I call it. The, uh... <laughs> Anyways, you guys are the best. Let's get a raid going. We're going to raid a good friend of mine. Philosopher's raid. Make sure to copy that over or just spam your favorite emote. Let's get in there and let's raid a good buddy of mine. Smoke a Luke who is still on. So let's, let's go show some support. He's hilarious. If you don't know him and he is, uh, absolute lunatic so let's go some support for smoke and again thank you to austin so much my friend here's mog and uh Aaliyah is is waving mog is waving everybody's waving <laughs> but let's get in there guys uh have a great night philosophers we will see you next time and i'll just drop these links on the way out here hop into the discord guys if you're new and hop into the gaming channel if you want to see our podcast from yesterday and of course uh this talk if you came in late will be on the gaming channel Uh, You guys have a great night, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace out, everybody. Bye. All right. We are raiding, Austin, and... All right. I'm going to put Philosophy's Raid. Hell yeah.